Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, freelance writer, player of games, writer of words, recorder of videos, and tabletop role-playing aficionado. I've missed you all so much. I'm humbled by everybody showing up to this uh, very, very unique, sort of crafting annihilation-esque uh, solo stream in which I will create my player character for our upcoming D&D campaign, which is War for the Lost Plane. Let me give a shout outs to some patrons, platinum patrons, Andrew, Joe, Will, Tiny Dancer, Nick R, Andy, Chris, Manuel, Basil, Nick C, and Travis, and gold patrons, RPG Paper Crafts, Charming Grenade, Pretty Boy, Nima, Marcos, Dave, Vicente, Gilberto, Sean, AK, Cert, Tubi, Adam, Dead Lizard, Lounge, Sam, Ross, Lumpy, Spuds, Drome, and Fatboy619. Thank you all very much for your support. John, Marshall, Drome, Jeff, Nick, Blanky, Lumpy, all of you, Ozzy, hello, hello, hello. I have missed you all so, so much. Uh, I hope everyone's had a good summer. It's been crazy with the pandemic and a newborn, but uh, I'm still alive. I'm still surviving. I've discovered I can uh, I can stay up till about 2 a.m. every night, and that kind of works. <laughs> My uh, wife works the graveyard shift, bless her heart, and some nights it goes better than others. Last night was not a good night, and so I have... Uh, had the had the little one all morning and thankfully she was uphill most of the morning and thankfully she just went down so fingers crossed uh, no interruptions so this is a rather unique situation um, if you haven't already seen the announcement uh, we are starting our next campaign on August 14th this is T minus two weeks uh, two weeks in a day, I guess, uh, which will be session zero. But this campaign is a little unique. A, it's going to be completely homebrewed by Chris. He's DMing, which for those of you that have watched the channel for a while or have watched our Storm King's Thunder campaign, you know that Chris is a fantastic DM and that often uh, me and him uh, switch back and forth between being a being DMs and being players. Um, this one is, is different than a lot of our previous campaigns. A, it's completely homebrewed, which uh, I always thought that Chris's homebrewed stuff from Storm Kings was better than Storm Kings itself, so I'm totally for that. Um, B, it's going to be a shorter campaign, is the idea. Uh, maybe something along the length of a Lost Mine of Fandover, so we're shooting for just a couple months, I think, maybe. Uh, in fact, I, I looked it up, and I think our Fandover campaign was about seven, 16 or 17 sessions, which sounds about good because um, the uh, Herrings, Reese and Rochelle, which are two of our players, are having a baby in December. So obviously it'd be really good timing to be able to... Uh, which, talk about the year of babies. Raymond, one of our other players, one of my best friends, had a baby in uh, February. I had a baby, uh, me and my wife, in July. And now the other... like It's just baby fever. So now we all, we're all giving Chris shit because he needs to like go, you know kidnap a baby or something and have a baby because everybody's having babies in 2020. I don't know why it happened like that. It's just that <laughs> went through the group. Um, but it'll be really good timing to be able to end it in December, similar to how we ended our campaign in July so that we could take a break. And kind of nice to have the holidays off anyway. And then the other big thing is that Chris wanted to do a high-level campaign. We, you know, we are previous, we've been playing D&D for oh gosh, five years now. Fifth edition. And we've primarily played, you know, the big published adventures, and they all do the same thing. They all, you know, start level one and end around level eleven or twelve, which we've discovered is where a lot of, uh, you know, D and D gameplay comes from, which is that tier one and tier two. And we we just kind of retire when we get to around level twelve. And something we were really talking about as well: what happens next? You know, we wanted to kind of look at an avenger style like bigger threat that requires all of these although ironically we already have like you know parties it's not like each party was party was in their solo movie they were already part of different groups but now we've got this big threat coming in that actually requires these veteran heroes to get together and repel it beyond that i don't really know much about the campaign because as i said it's completely homebrewed by uh chris he did mention that uh equipment wise so he mentioned two things one we're going to start the campaign at level 13 which means even people that ended campaigns at level 12 will need to level up a little bit. So starting at 13 and not to worry about any kind of equipment because 
it sounds like we're almost going to be like Terminator rules where we get like teleported into this plane with like nothing and then he's going to provide stuff and we're going to try to give everybody a level playing field because some campaigns were a lot more generous with magic items than others and we are allowed a free respec which is I think a, a video game term which is you can um, basically recreate your character um I think even down to the stat roll. I'm not sure how far he wants to get into it. Because, I mean, some of these, like, like uh, Raymond's playing Kether. I don't know, you can see. I can scroll down a little bit. He's actually put some of the tokens together. Raymond's playing Kether, which was in Prince of the Apocalypse. We haven't played that character in probably, what has it been, three or four years? So, you know, and those character sheets are so old. And, and a lot of these character sheets, you know, we morphed into Giants of the Unstorm King Thunder. And obviously Tomb of Annihilation, people had Trickster Gods. So a lot of the stats and things just don't really... Um, work anymore <laughs> so kind of having to recreate a lot of these characters from the ground and a lot of people want to redo so i think um for my wife's character for example i think she wanted to do a different uh god and possibly a different devotion path i know that reese definitely wanted to recreate tim i think as a full cleric but maybe a different kind of cleric um i don't know beyond that what the plan is so it's going to be interesting so you know you're not going to see the exact same uh character builds necessarily we're kind of given a free chance to go back and do it and that brings us to me so because i've been mostly a dm i only had the one character which was the character i played in Storm Kings. I guess I, I had a few like one shots too, so that was part of it. But it, I, and I put on the Patreon poll like, hey, here's the characters I've got. What do you think? And I was always leaning towards, well, gosh, you know, I don't get to be a player very often in these campaigns, so how can I pass up the chance to make a new character? And I liked Kazan a lot. I thought that was a cool, you know, my idea for Kazan, which was my Storm King's Thunder character, was a basically like a, a Jedi. Like I wanted to be a, a freaking. You know, Star I wanted to have like force powers and be able to be up in melee but still cast spells. And I thought doing a crazy paladin warlock combo ended up working really, really well. And that was even before I think Pact of the Blade was a thing. So that was a fun character and I enjoyed it. And it would be fun to take that character into higher levels for sure. But the opportunity to play an all new character is just too tantalizing because I don't get a lot of chance. And and, and a lot of the fun I had back when I was playing like Neverwinter Nights uh back in the day. I would just make characters, like, just theory crafting, but not even theory, just, like, building characters. And, and third edition, too, with prestige classes and all that, like, you had to freaking build, like, you had to figure your whole plan out at level one, which I'm glad that's not nearly the case in, in fifth edition. Fifth edition's way more accessible and user-friendly. When I was doing that in Neverwinter Nights, it was a hassle, but it was also fun. Like, you got to make all these crazy cool, you know, multi-class disaster combinations. So I've got several ideas for characters, uh, when we started Storm Kings, I had three primary ideas, or three character concepts that were my favorite that I really wanted to play. And I went to Chris with all three of them and said, which one do you think would fit your this campaign the best? And Chris said, that one. And that was uh, Kazan, because he had the uh, the connection to a patron, and he had like mind powers, and Chris was like, okay, I can do this, and... and fit it into the Kraken Society. So that was that character. My second character is one I'm actually playing right now in, uh, shout out to patron Marcos's campaign. I'm playing as a player, which is a hair metal rock star bard, uh, a dragonborn with a pink mohawk. Fabulous character. Absolutely love the chance that I get to play that Valor bard. He carries a giant great axe that he uses with guitar riffs. Friggin' amazing. Character number three is the one I want to do for this campaign. So I'm very fortunate that I'm going to be able to get all three of my top three characters uh, in. So, character number three is, <laughs> unfortunately, another multi-class disaster, kind of similar to um, similar to Kazan. And feel free to give me as much feedback, and, and we're going to literally build this character right now. Because the crazy thing is, not only do I have to explain this character concept and bring them to life, but I then have the incredible, daunting task of then leveling them to 13 before I've ever even played this character. So talk about freaking theory crafting. Is you have to build this character, get them to 13, and then try and figure out 
how does this character even work? I've never played them before. I don't know how often this has come up or if any of you have experienced this where it's like we're going to start, you get to build, you're going to have this new character, you've never played them before, and you're already jumping into tier three. So that's going to be an exciting thing. So, hello. I'm not giving shout outs, but all of you now are absolutely amazing. I'm reading all your comments now. New watcher of Rogue Rotson. Glad to see it. That is so much content out there. So, the character is inspired from three main sources. I want to make a demon hunter. And the character is inspired from three sources. The first source is Blade, the Marvel Comics vampire hunter, portrayed by Wesley Snipes in the excellent Blade 1, the very cheesy but still entertaining Blade 2, and the we're going to pretend it doesn't exist Blade Trinity. Because he's going to be a tiefling who hunts demons. So half demon, hates demons, hunts demons. Blade, half vampire, hates vampires, hunts vampires. So there's that concept with him being a tiefling demon hunter, which I think is really cool. He's got a lot of uh, self-loathing, I guess, in that in that regard. Um, the other inspiration is uh, very nerdy. But actually relevant now because they just recently did a Kickstarter. Um, Suikoden 2 is one of my all-time favorite RPGs. Console RPG, JRPG, all of that. Um, fabulous game. I love it to death. Probably in my top ten of all time. And by the way, they recently, uh, a lot of the developers are doing a Kickstarter right now um, called Ayudin Chronicles, I think, based on the Suikoden series. And it's already hit $2 million. It's, it's huge right now, so... Look up that shit if you like that. But um, one of the characters is Killy, who had this really... I should have had some pictures up. But if you look up Killy um, from Suikoden, he's got this just fabulous, giant red... I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a red and black like coat thing, like overcoat that goes completely around and is fully sleeved to where when he stands, it's just this like block of, of just fabulous outfit. And he has this giant tricorn hat that he wears... It is just this mo it's just this fabulous costumed character that I freaking love. And his attack was a dual wield short swords, but I'm gonna change that to something else. But I, I love the look. I want that look as this just he's a demon hunter, but I don't want to do the like the leather armor thing. I want this character to be just a fabulously like elegant looking, like keeps his shit very clean and proper. Like that's a cool look. And then uh Combat wise, I'm really leaning toward 30 people. Good lord, just me talking about characters. Shout outs to all of you. Um, combat wise, I like the literal demon hunter from Diablo 3, which uh, was, I think, canonized in Heroes of the Storm as Vala, but um, the dual crossbow wielder, basically. I thought that was a cool look. So, those three uh, references, I guess, are what I'm using to create this character with a unique twist. And the twist is that he's also got a little demon friend with him. So his order, which is an order of demon hunters that he's part of, um, as part of their order, I guess, um, you bind, you ritually bind yourself to a demon and you gain strength from that so it's very similar to like the illidan thing from uh from if you can't tell i'm a big fan of the of blizzard games uh at least back when they were making games more regularly <laughs> um and you ritually bind yourself to a demon you gain power from that and it's very much a use the demon's strength against demons fight fire with fire that's the concept and but in this case Either I can't decide if something backfired or if this is just what ended up happening, but the demon he ended up binding himself to, his literal patron, is he's going to be packed to the chain. It's going to be a little imp that's with him. And uh, the imp is who grants him his powers. And him and the imp, like, kind of hate each other. <laughs> and yes, this is totally an excuse for me to get to roleplay basically two characters. But uh, they're going to have a really funny dynamic with each other where they both kind of like great each other and the imp is kind of a sidekick but also kind of mocks uh, 
you know, he's the playful one who really mocks the the, the demon hunter, and the demon hunter is more of the serious, stoic one. Uh, so I, I'm really hoping to create a cool dynamic there and, and have a lot of fun with those characters. But And I realize that is definitely not optimal. You don't want a demon hunter necessarily needs, like, a little imp with him. That's, that's not the optimal build, but I'm not necessarily going for optimal. I want to go for my fun character concept. Now, that being said, I want to optimize that build to the best of my ability, which is where all of you are going to come in. So, now that I've talked for 20 minutes about this freaking character, let's actually go into... Uh, we're going to use the character monster to build it, which is Roll20's way of building characters through the character sheet, but I did a test run of this, and there are a lot of limitations, especially when you start multi-classing, and it does things like um, if you have inherent spells, like from... Uh, like like Elf or Tiefling, it counts those as your spells for other classes. So I'm going to need to go in, I'm going to, I'll use the character monster, but, and you all will have to help me with this, but I'm also going to need to be uh, making custom adjustments as things come up so that I don't miss out on anything, because I think in my test run it was, it was, uh, I was, I was losing a lot of spells because I was gaining them from other places, and unfortunately the multi-class, especially having spell casting from two different sources, uh, is going to be a little tricky to keep track of, but we're going to we're going to do our best. So the idea here is it's going to be a multi-classed ranger warlock, ranger monster slayer, because I figure that is the best way to uh, create a character who solely hunts demons, because obviously you can do the favorite enemy thing. And Chris did say that we can use the revised Ranger, which is just a better version of the Ranger. It's like a like a patched update to the player handbook Ranger, which, funny enough, uh, I don't think Wizards will ever admit that the Ranger needs fixing. But in the, it is in our Earth Arcana, so they did create the revised Ranger. Um, and mainly all of it does is... It, the problem is the, the Ranger, as written in the player's handbook, has a lot of uh, features that most campaigns don't use. Uh, and that aren't very fun necessarily for that ranger player. Whereas the revised ranger adds um, abilities that are more dynamic and engaging for the ranger, as well as just a, a power increase, mainly because it does straight up extra damage to certain enemies. So uh, it's going to be... Uh, so And unfortunately it's not in the character monster, so I will have to add in the actual revised ranger stuff, which I think it's mainly just how the favored enemy works. Uh, you can do that crazy thing. I, I know Raymond was doing that, where you can like sense uh, your enemies from like a mile away or something insane. But I mean, if Chris lets me do it, then I'm doing it. So, <laughs> but I think Ranger would be uh, the best thing to do. And obviously, Monster Slayer, which is I think the one presented in um, Xanathar's. Is that a new one? Um, just because it seems like that's. I don't know, like a different kind of hunter. I know, everybody seems to go hunter, so that seems like a, a more interesting way to do it. Um, Slayer's Prey is kind of a nice hunter's mark, and it lets you specifically focus on somebody. But And I'm thinking if I want to do a Ranger Warlock multi-class, I should start Ranger, because the skills of this character would... Uh, make more sense. It would just make more sense story-wise if he started off his career as a ranger and then eventually uh, joined this order and ritually bound himself to a demon and did all that. So I think story-wise it makes sense that he's a ranger first. Plus I think he gets a few more hit points if he starts as a ranger. So, And fun fact, you know, we're going to use our house rules for uh, character creation and all of this is being streamed live so I can't cheat in terms of like, you know, rolling the dice or anything. So even though Chris is not here to see this, um... You know, we're all going <laughs> to, all of you and, and the stream is going to keep me honest in terms of uh, rolling. Our rule is that you can roll for your stats, but if you roll less than the standard array total, which I want to say is 72, if you literally add up all the attributes of the standard array, then you can just take the standard array. So uh, that's, the, that's the plan we're going to use right now. And I, I did a test run and rolled really bad, so I, I did my test with the... Uh, standard array. So, uh, what do you all think about Ranger, uh, Warlock as an overall thing, revised Ranger, and then I'm definitely choosing Tiefling. We're not, that's not really a choice here because that's just part of the character 
uh, concept. Uh, although, I just realized we do have a big choice of tiefling, don't we? They added a bunch of tieflings. Oh, man, I need to make this window bigger, too. And I apologize for the big black, like, bar here. I don't have... Um, I, I, I don't have the, uh, the portrait set up. So, uh, normally, you probably wouldn't notice that this screen is taken up by our portraits, but it looks kind of glaringly obvious now that this is all, like... You know, it's not... I'm not cutting this off on purpose. I'm trying... I literally had our old Tomb of Annihilation portraits on there. I, I haven't updated any of that yet, so... Apologize for how the... And I don't have the title. I was thinking about instead of doing War for the Lot, like I did Tomb of Annihilation on, on the banner on the top, maybe doing like what session it is, if that would be more helpful, session one, session two, that kind of thing. But I'll figure it out. I got two weeks still. We'll figure out all the things here. Um, so let's see. We're definitely doing Tiefling, but we've got a bunch of different different Tiefling sub-race choices. And unfortunately, the way this captures the window... You all can't see whenever I click on one of these drop-down menus. You can't actually see the choices here. I don't know why uh, that's the case. Something about the streaming software and, and being window capture. You can only... It, it never it never captures drop-down windows. So um, if you need a reminder, I can choose between the standard tiefling, which I think is the Asmodeus tiefling. Um, and then there's Beelzebub, Despater, Fierna... Glacia, Levistus, Mammon, Mephistopheles, and Zeriel. Uh, those were all added in Mordenkainen's Tomb of Foes. And I believe they all come with different stat bonuses and different spells, but I would have to remember which is which here. So if I'm going to be a Ranger Warlock, um, and I want to dual wield crossbows so dex obviously is important and charisma is important so uh oh my wife's in the chat that means she woke up honey you're supposed to be asleep right now you need sleep <laughs> uh, that's funny um, let's see you get gimped at 5th level oh no I don't want to be gimped what source book is the revised ranger from? Um, it's from an unearthed arcana. So it's actually not from a source book. But Chris did say we could use unearthed arcana in this game as long as we ran it by him. And I did talk to him about... Um, and, and and there is precedent, you know, as Supreme Court rules. Uh, there, uh, there was precedent. What about Raymond versus Chris in 2015? Because he, he did play the revised ranger. So I figured that would be, that would be okay. Resistance to fire damage is going to be very nice because... As much as I don't know about this campaign, I do know it involves a, a war between angels and demons, which is why it'd be fun to play like a, a, a Diablo 3 style inspired character, and resistance to fire damage would be very, very nice indeed. Um, alignment. I need to pick alignment also. Um, it's funny as alignment doesn't really mean anything in 5e, does it? Like, it used to be so important, but it honestly, it's just RP, and at that point, just role play whatever you want. Um, I don't know. Put him at neutral for now. I may, I may change that. I may change that. He's kind of, he's kind of lawful because he joined an order to hunt them, but he's, I still not thought that far ahead. Alignment just doesn't mean, it's just, you know, just, just RP, man. <laughs> so, all right, sub race. Um, I dig Mephistopheles. That should not be taken out of context. <laughs> I'm a Beelzebub man myself. Uh, let's see. What is Mephistopheles? Charisma 2, Intelligence 1. I definitely don't need Intelligence, although the spells are pretty cool. You know, the Mage Hand cantrip for free, which is free cantrips are good. Uh, when you reach third level, you can cast Burning Hands as a second level spell once with this trait. Once per long rest. When you reach fifth level, you can cast the Flame Blade spell once per long rest. With this trait. Does that mean you have to choose between casting Burning Hands or Flame Blade once per long rest? Because just the legacy of Cania is the trait. What is Flame Blade? Concentration, 10 minutes, you evoke a fiery blade in your free hand. The blade is someone in size and shape to a scimitar, not last for the duration. 
can use your action to make a melee spell attack with a fiery blade and hit the target deals 3d6 fire damage and sends bright light. Alright. It's kind of fun. Burning hands is probably more useful, though. Hmm. The only bummer is I don't need... I do like having Mage Hand as a cantrip. I don't need that Intelligence Bump, though. Is there any of them that give me Dex? Because that would be the best thing to go. Literal Angels and Demons alignment means everything. I guess that's true. <laughs> Zariel Tiefling. What is a Zariel Tiefling? Zariel's from... Isn't she on the cover of Descent into Avernus? She's the Fallen Angel. Stronger than the typical tiefling, receive magical abilities that aid them in battle. Charisma 2, strength plus 1. See, I also don't think I'm going to be strength based, though. I think I'm going to be uh, dexterity. You know, Thaumaturgy is a cantrip. Thaumaturgy is always a very, very fun cantrip to play with. Uh, let's see, you know, Searing Smite as a second level spell, and Branding Smite. Can you use smites for ranged attacks? Is it only melee attacks? Yeah, melee weapon attacks. That would be really good for a melee-focused warrior tiefling, for sure. But I don't think... And the other interesting thing is I am building this character kind of around the party. And we're already going to have Tim, who wants to be a frontline cleric, from what I heard from Chris and Reese. Uh, Heather, who is going to be a obviously frontline paladin. And I believe... Uh, Raymond's rogue Kethra is an arcane trickster rogue who is mainly the uh, hit and run tactics that you kind of saw from like Manix. So maybe not necessarily frontline, but kind of going back and forth. Uh, and even Gillian in, in Tomb of Annihilation would, would run up and, and be melee quite a few times. So I don't. I'm really leaning towards being a backline uh, ranged attacker. And then I'm also going to have some really sexy spells because I'm going to go Fiend Warlock. And Fiend Warlock gets access to, like, Fireball. So, weirdly enough, even though I'm going to be a lot of Ranger, I may actually be the nuker of the party. Uh, I th the Bard still has some good nukes, for sure, like Call Lightning and stuff. But that would be very interesting. Um, and all of them give me Charisma, so I'm all going to get that Charisma boost. So... That's a name I haven't heard in a while. I know. We we're all so excited. What's funny is none of us could actually remember uh, uh, Raymond's combat tactics with Kether. We all remember the sh freaking hilarious shenanigans uh, out of combat. Uh, very similar to George. Raymond is just a freaking amazing D&D player with the shit he comes up with. Um, but we were trying to figure out, like, wait, what did Kether actually do in combat? And I was like, oh, just kind of, you know, the usual rogue thing. All right, so... It looks like the difference are spells and the stat bone. That's another one that gives intelligence plus one. Thaumaturgy, Ray of Sickness, and Crown of Madness. Those don't sound terribly sexy. Poison damage. Okay. Or what was the other one? Crown of Madness. Can I go... If I hit the back button, is that going to screw things up? Okay, there we go. Because I'm going to have access to all these freaking spells right out of the gate. It's only for humanoids, but then they go kind of nuts. Okay. Not bad, not bad. I think I like the... Uh, Mephistopheles. I'd, although I get Burning Hands as a Fiend. Also, if I'm going to go Fiend... Uh, dis dispater, dispotter. Ooh, there's dexterity. He hid and stole diamonds from a green jack. He did. He tried to like pass off like griffin eggs as rocks and like uh, turned a bunch of elemental cultists into a suicide cult. That was the funniest I laughed in that campaign. Uh, at one point, he was like a southern merchant for some reason, trying to sell something. Basically, you give him some poison, and he just tried to give that off to everybody. Uh, so dex is really good. Great city of Dees occupies most of Hell's second layer. It's the urban Hell. You know, Thaumaturgy, which is, again, very fun. Um, disguise Self, once per long rest. That's always a fun ability. And Detect Thoughts. Detect Thoughts might be really good for a Demon Hunter, because 
a lot of uh, you know demons and fiends can uh, shapeshift and obviously lie so detect thoughts could definitely come in handy and would make sense something that this character would know I use that with my uh, last character too, Kazan. Read the thoughts of certain creatures. Initially learn its surface thoughts of the creature, and then you can use an action, and they have to roll a save to gain insight into its emotional state and something that looms large in its mind. That could be a very good spell to have, especially one, yeah, Lumpy. Um, Especially a spell that you don't need to use all the time because it's only a once per long rest. But when you need to like interrogate somebody or something, that's that's actually really cool to have. So I like that a lot. I don't know if I would have to use Disguise Self as much. Because I think this character likes to be flamboyant and wear that giant uniform and uh, probably doesn't, you know, would look at this as something demons do that he would not be a fan of. Although it doesn't require concentration, it lasts an hour, so that's kind of useful too. All right, so I like the dis this. How do you? I don't know how to the dis tiefling. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, you said Galassia also does Dex. We're only on race. There's so many freaking choices already. Uh, oh yeah, what was the was it thaumaturgy for the for the dis one, which is a fun one. Minor illusion is one of those that's very tricky because I feel like a lot of uh, players try to really get away with a lot more than what Minor Illusion can do, given that it's just a cantrip. You know, because and the bad thing is, you know, there's there's Silent Image, there's Major Image, there's all these different Illusion spells, and it's really tricky for the DM to try and keep track of, okay, what all can you actually do with this, and how convincing is it? Which, in this case, it's basically just a, a sound or a small five-foot cube image that can't actually create any sensory effects, which could still be very effective as an illusion. I think Thaumaturgy is probably more fun overall. That's one where you can just do like magical effects to make yourself seem more badass. <laughs> uh, this one also has Disguise Self. And instead of Detect Thoughts, it has Invisibility. Once per long rest, Invisibility. Good lord, that could also come in handy. Especially because I figure... Dissipator. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, well, I guess so. Yeah, it kind of is Hellboy. I was even picturing Hellboy. It was funny as my initial, before I decided to dual build crossbows, I was thinking about bringing just having one big crossbow and having that just shoot like Eldritch Blasts because Eldritch Blast is still so damn powerful. Uh, and then I was thinking, yeah, with Hellboy with his like giant gun. <laughs> For sure. Um, and I mean, who doesn't love Hellboy? So the real question is, what's more helpful, going having a once per long rest invisibility or a once per long rest detect thoughts? I feel like detect thoughts. I, I yeah, I could. That's true. Invisibility, you could you could cast on others, as my wife is pointing out. Winged teeth. You can get wings. I don't know how that works. Is that a high level thing? I don't know if I want wings, though, because uh, this character, that, that would be, like, too demon-y, I feel like. I mean, that would, go, that would go more into, like, the Illidan part of being a demon hunter. Yeah, Eldritch Blast is... I mean, unfortunately, Eldritch Blast is so good, it's like you kind of have to do that as a warlock, which is a bit of a shame. Now, my ranger abilities, like Slayer's Prey and... Um, uh, uh, Hunter's Mark only proc off of weapon attacks. So the way I'm building this character, uh, Eldritch Blast, I don't think is going to be the way to go, even though it's a freaking 1d10, and I think at the level we're starting, I can fire off three of them with one action, but none of the other stuff will actually add to those attacks. But it is... It's kind of a bummer, because anytime you can... I mean, you can dip into Warlock, and as a ranged person, you're like, well, wait, shouldn't I just immediately start using Eldritch Blasts and take all the invocations that make Eldritch Blasts so, you know, amazing and all this stuff? So, I don't think I want to go down that route, necessarily. You give up your innate spells with wings. Uh, I know, there are new tiefling options. Well, if you played Brysis, then maybe you could have remade your 
Uh, tiefling. I mean, you can still take what is the what is the regular tiefling? It's it's Asmodeus, which is the standard. Uh, which is you can cast Hellish Rebuke and Darkness, which are good spells as well. Um, although again, as a, as a fiend tiefling, I think I'm gonna get Hellish Rebuke. So I think I like. I guess I didn't look at all of them, did I? Mammon. Mammon. You know, Mage Hand, Floating Disc, and Arcane Lock. That seems like more of the magic one. That doesn't apply. Intelligence plus one. I was hoping they would all be different stats, but it looks like they're all intelligence or dex. Most of them are intelligence, actually. Uh, Mephistopheles already looked at you, and Zeri already looked at you. Uh, Levistus, I didn't look at you. Okay, that one's Khan. That's different. Ray of Frost, Armor of Agatha. Okay, you're the you're the frozen wasteland. Yeah, Stygia. Armor of Agathus and Darkness. Armor of Agathus is an amazing spell, but again, as a Fiend Warlock, uh, I'm going to be able to get temporary hit points on every kill, I believe. So I don't think I'll necessarily want to have a bunch, because temporary hit points don't stack. I think I like the Deist Tiefling the best, because having the having the dex increase is good. Um, Thaumaturgy is always fun, and Detect Thoughts once per long rest seems very appropriate for the character. Thaumaturgy, you cause flames to flicker, brighten, dim, or change color for a minute. Cause harmless tremors in the ground for a minute. Instant chain is cause an unlocked door or window to fly open or slam shut. It's just like various little horror movie stuff. <laughs> it very, you know, it, it would add to his flamboyance. Would be to occasionally do that if he was actually... I don't know how often we're going to deal with actually like towns and stuff, though. Who knows what Chris has cooked up here. But So I think we're going to go with Deese Tiefling. Dispater. Um because that gives me the Dex bonus, the Charisma bonus, Thaumaturgy, Cantrip, and a once per long rest disguise self or detect thoughts. So excellent. That took us a while, but we came up with our I think we came up with a sub race. Horizon Walker. Is that hmm I don't, I'll have to look at that one. That's the like uh dimensional hopping one. That one did look really cool. I guess I need to look and see, because I guess it's the base ranger that gets favored enemy. So as long as I'm a ranger, I'm still getting that bonus against fiends. Alright, so we're going to start ranger. You can, yeah. Uh, for temporary hit points. Um, and I'm just going to use the player handbook ranger, and then I will add the revised stuff on top of the sheet after. Which is not in roll 20 at all, so I'll have to just add that in manually. Uh, okay, so we've got skills, we've got favored enemy, which unfortunately that also works differently than how this ranger works. Um, let's see, I've got it pulled up here. And I think I want to do for a background, because one thing that's annoying is you do your class here, then you do your abilities, then you do your background, but if you select a skill here, you may already automatically get that skill for your background so you kind of have to know what your background is in order to efficiently pick your skills here because otherwise you'll get to the very end and it's like oh hey you chose this skill twice i'm like oh okay uh so background wise so the idea is this character uh is part of an order and plus i think we're all being teleported into this extra plane so i think i'm gonna make him from eberron because i just freaking think eberron's cool as shit um, specifically as part of the uh, Temple of the Silver Flame, but he's like an offshoot of that, where he's not a Knight Templar, he's more of a, uh, I guess a bounty hunter, like it'd be an outlander, somebody who just tracks down and hunts demons, that's his whole thing. Um, which I guess, I guess outlander would be the way to go for that, kind of, not necessarily outdoorsy, but, I mean, there's not, there's not really a uh, urban version of survival, right? It's just it'd be like a combination of insight and investigation, which I think I'm going to take all of those. So what is let's see I guess I could do faction agent from like Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide might be I mean, really the background just comes down to pick like a combination of skills or language or some equipment like the 
it's not re it's not hard to just kind of customize whatever your background is. Um, but I think Outlander actually gave me some pretty good. Let's see where is that. So Outlander gives athletics and survival. And then as my so as my skills here, I could choose the more urban skills. Yeah, it does make you go in order. Um, yeah, Chris played a paladin. I, I technically did play a paladin. Uh, I played a paladin slash warlock in Storm Kings. So I guess I really like what warlocks do in, in 5e. Urban bounty hunter is a thing. So I haven't decided if... I guess that could be his back. I mean, the thing is, fiends are everywhere, right? But I guess they would normally congregate around people. So maybe it would make sense to be more urban than than outdoorsy. But he would, I mean, he would also go out to, like, where, you know, if there was a demon, I don't know, hold up in a cave, like, he would go there too. So he's not necessarily one or the other. But you're right, Urban Bounty Hunter is a thing. That's from Sword Coasts. He's got Ear to the Ground. I don't, do these features ever come up into play? I don't think so. Uh, you're chosen. You're in frequent contact with people in the segment of society that your chosen quarries move through. Eh, that might be better than what is the Outlander feature? Wanderer. You just always know. That was actually a really good one. You know everything, and you can feed everybody all the time. Like that's <laughs> like you don't have to worry about that part of the game. <laughs> uh, you get athletics and survival versus urban bounty hunter, which is choose from two among deception, insight, persuasion, and stealth. I mean, honestly, I'm probably going to end up with. Uh, a certain amount of skill the, the skills that I want regardless of which background I actually choose I don't know if I actually have the Sword Coast Adventures guide in here so I don't know if I can select that one and unfortunately you guys can't see my choices here but I've got I've got the Player's Handbook I've got uh, Ravnica I think I've got one or two I do not have the Sword Coast Adventures guide on here though so technically if I wanted to pick Urban I would have to do it as a custom background all right, well, if I wanted to pick, just as an example, let's pick Outlander, which would give me Athletics and Survival. So you actually can't go back and forth. Uh, so my other choice is Animal Handling, Insight, Investigation, Nature, Perception, and Stealth. I think that's a pretty easy choice for a Demon Hunter. He's definitely taking Insight, try and figure people out, see if there's any hidden demons. Um, perception for an archer, ranged person, and I think stealth for a, a hunter. Um, and unfortunately, because he is very multiple attribute dependent, um, I don't think taking investigation is even worth it, and I'm not sure any of our characters are going to be very intelligent, frankly, because we don't have a wizard and intelligence such a dump stat. Maybe uh, Kethra will have a decent intelligence, because uh, Arcane Trickster Rogue but it's going to be a huge dump stat for me, so I don't think it's going to be very worth doing any intelligence skills. <laughs> That's true, you could. I, I think I like this, though. Insight, Perception, Stealth, and then the background gives me uh, Athletics and Survival. Um... What's, what's going to be interesting is I'm going to have a good charisma, but I'm not actually going to have proficiency in any of the charisma skills, which I think makes sense because he would never want to actually talk to demons because that way lies to ruin. Like, he would just never give them the chance. Now, he can be stopped by his party members for sure, and then they probably want to engage with the demons, and I would, as a player, certainly let that happen if I can. But he would not want to actually talk with his prey. Um, he might want to shake down, like, you know, other people to get information, but uh, normally it'd be him like stealthing and snooping and, and searching around. So the only thing that might be useful is to take one of the, be proficient at least one of the Chris, probably like an intimidation, which I guess that's what Urban Bounty Hunter would do versus uh, survival's good because that's tracking. Maybe switching athletics for something like Intimidation, but I don't think I can quite make that happen. So I think this is okay. I think it's okay, and I think we're okay doing Outlander. 
So insight perception stealth, favorite enemy. Now this is where it gets interesting because uh, for the revised ranger, you can choose beasts, fey, humanoids, monstrosities, or undead. So the nice thing is the revised ranger, uh, you only need dex and charisma. That's true, and that's my plan. Obviously, I would like Constitution to be decent because Khan, I think, is always, you know, everybody could use hit points. Uh, especially in Spellcasters, if you want to do Concentration type stuff, that does come in handy. So I think the order of attributes are going to be uh, Dex, probably number one, Charisma, number two, although ideally both of them at least a plus three. Uh, Khan is the next highest. Then probably Wisdom. Unfortunately, his weakness is going to be mental stuff is going to do bad things to him, which is a bummer. Um, and then probably strength and intelligence are going to be his lowest. I'm hoping for at least average, but it might have to go below average on those. Uh, so I, I think for my first one, I would choose human. If, I, if I'm a demon hunter, I think humanoids is one of the, one of the ones you want to go after, which uh, I'm going to ignore this because literally my, uh, the revised ranger humanoid is just a, one of the ones you can pick. About 20, 10. You know, fucking Chris, uh, with his character, he's playing in, in that game. He's, a, he's actually playing that game uh, with me, which is really fun because we never get a chance to beat both be players together. Uh, and we all rolled stats, and he's got a freaking 20 dex on an Aarakocra Shadow Monk. So he's got a freaking, like, I don't know, plus 7 to hit at level 3. So I hate him for that. <laughs> that's, that's an insanely high number. I doubt my stats are going to be that good because this character is uh, probably not going to be terribly optimized. Uh, definitely going to take Abyssal because I think I already know Infernal from being a uh, Tiefling, I believe. Yeah, I already know Infernal. So Abyssal covers like the other end of the demon language. Uh, humanoid, we get plus two damage on. I'll have to... Let's see. I don't think you even choose terrain with the uh, revised ranger. You ignore difficult terrain. You have advantage on initiative rolls. Uh, you have advantage on attack rolls against creatures not yet acted. God, that is, this is really actually powerful shit. Um, and it just says, while traveling, you forage very well. You can track creatures and know things. It just It's a better bullet point list of things than this is, I think. So I'm not, I don't have to choose a favorite terrain because it's not a thing in the revised ranger. Point by, yeah, you know, we've never used point by, so I don't know if I want to, I don't think I want to actually do that. We've literally never used point by in our games. Um, it is a thing, and that's actually how I'm how I'm used to doing it in video games. Um, in, like, stuff like Neverwinter Nights was all, that was all point by. Um, but we've never done that before. We pretty much just use either roll for stats, or we fall back on the standard array if we have to. So, uh, I, nobody's ever done point by, so I don't want to have to introduce that, even though it's, it can definitely be pretty good, especially if you want to min-max your stats. That's the way to go. Instead, what we're going to do, and y'all are going to keep me honest here, this is literally going to be our first roll, at least that I can see, uh, is going to be rolling for stats for this character, which right now we've got a plus one to dex and a plus two to charisma. And those definitely want to be our two highest, even though our spellcasting ability is wizard. But I think as a as a ranger you can take mostly spells that don't actually care about what your spellcasting modifier is i'm i'm not going to take any ranger spells that involve like a save or anything like that i may want to take something like cure wounds and that would be a little bit worse than usual but other than that i don't really think i care that much about wisdom what do you mean you will have extra 6 stats now are you thinking i'm not going to take feats aussie cuz I'm all about those feats. I know the ability score increase is the more optimal way to go, but feats are fun. <laughs> we like feats. And if I'm going dual crossbows, I got to take crossbow expert uh, for sure. But man, feats are so much fun. It's it's hard. It's hard not to take a feat. All right, so right now we are going to roll for our stats. Drum roll, please. Because if these stats add up to at least... The standard arrays total, then I'm keeping these stats and we're making them work. Otherwise, if they don't, then we're going to use the standard array. So, let's do it. Roll 46, drop the lowest. Oh, shit. That's, that's pretty good. 
I think that's pretty good. We rolled an 18. 14, 13, 14, 9, 10. Somebody do the math. What does that add up to? But I think that's I think that's pretty damn good. It's not insanely good, but we did get the 18 out of the, out of the gate. Uh, let's see. Plus 14, plus 9, plus 10. That is 78 total. So that is definitely above uh, above the standard array. So we can take these stats. And what's nice is this will be immortalized in our chat log. So <laughs> that's pretty good, though. I like that. So here's the question. Do I want to have a freaking 20 charisma to start off the gate? Oh, man. I didn't even realize this was going to be a possibility. Now I have choices to make. Yeah. No, we can't go 20 decks. Can't quite go 20 decks. At least uh, right, off the, right, right off the bat. Um, I only have a plus one for decks. Which, so, the one shitty thing about this roll is if I want to have at least a plus three in two different stats, I actually have to put the 14 in Charisma, one of the 14s, and that would boost my Charisma to a 16. Because if I... If I put the... Actually, I guess I have two 14s, don't I? So I could put the 14 in... If I put the 18 in Charisma... Oh, here's the problem. If I if I don't put the 18 in Dex... If I put the 18 in Charisma and go 20 Charisma... And I put the 14 in Dex, that's only a 15 Dex. That's only a plus 2, so that's not good. So I think... Yeah, I am ranged down. I think we need to put the... I think we need to put the 18 in Dex. So we do that... Which gives me a 19. Oh, man. I'm going to need that ASI now, aren't I? Because that 13 is probably going to go in something like Con. So I may have to use that second ability score increase to give myself some sexier stats. All right, then we put a 14 in Charisma, which 16 is good. 16 is good. Now... Where are the rest going to go? Um... Probably going to do something like 9 Intelligence, 10 Strength. I think those are going to be the lowest. Uh, and then what remains is a 14 and a 13. So basically, do I want the extra hit point bump? Or do I want to be better at mental saving throws? Hmm. Tempted to go higher... I'm tempted to go higher constitution. Zaijin, why do you think... Yeah, obviously that will be uh, plus one. It'll, it'll be plus one to dex, and whichever one is the 13 will be the other plus one. Yeah, keep in mind I am multi-classing into, into Warlock. Um, and Khan would help for uh, concentration spells. I don't know how often I would have to cast concentration spells. But I'm sure they would come up at some point. Yeah, I can increase. I guess it doesn't matter if I'm going to increase both. So right now, if we look like... Yeah, those are good. I mean, they're both good choices, honestly. What about this? What about this? And then on, on one of our ASIs, which I think I'll get two at, if I start at level 13, right? But I need to use one to take Crossbow Expert. If I use one to take Crossbow Expert, that's at level four. At level eight, I can take the uh, plus one to two different stats. Uh, and at that point, I can go Wisdom and Dex. So I think that's going to be the plan there. That was a pretty good roll, though. I did not expect to get a plus four. So... As much as I like the feats, and this is the interesting thing too, as much as I like feats, because I have two very uh, two odd numbers, and one of them is a 19, I think I will use that second uh, ability score increase to actually do an ability score increase. Alas, intelligence will be a 9. I think both him and Kazan were a little bit lower on the intelligence scale. 
<laughs> and so is my Rockstar Bard. <laughs> I'm just not playing any of the uh, cerebral characters. Okay, so I think that's uh, I think that's what I look like at level at level freaking one. Keep in mind. And look at that! I rolled a six six one six. That's nuts. Pretty cool stats, though. I'm I'm pretty pleased with that. Okay. So next, we've already kind of got the background. Oh, I get a tool proficiency. I don't know. Um, he plays a flute occasionally. Uh, forget about that instantly. I get another language proficiency. What other language would come in handy for deep speech? Is that something undercommon? Primordial. That could work with demon stuff. Primordial is like uh, elemental talk, right? Although I think Gillian can speak that too. Um, he was a bounty hunter, I think. I'll fill in all this later because this makes you choose from the actual uh, list of traits and ideals from this particular uh, background and my I'm, I'm, I'll do my own <laughs> I'm not going to pick from one of these one of his uh, bonds or ideals will just be like his uh, gear like he takes very good care of his like uniform and outfit and everything I think that would be pretty funny uh, personality is definitely gonna, like a fight fire with fire he uses demon powers to hunt demons at least you're not Coles with a five. Yeah, I think she's still got the lowest of anybody with that role. Um, equipment. I don't know how much this is gonna matter at all because we're gonna be stripped of our equipment, I think, to some extent. So I'm not sure. And if anything, I want to use crossbows, and I know those are expensive. But again, how do you even do starting well? Like I don't, I don't. I don't know how this is going to work. I need to talk to Chris about this because obviously at level 13, I'm going to have a lot, I should have a lot more resources than a level one character. So we'll have to see how all that works, but I don't give a shit. You know what? I'm going to do starting wealth because um, I don't even, I don't even want to put things in my character sheet that I don't want to use. So we're just going to, this way there's not going to be any, I'll, I'll, I'll custom, I'll manually put all that in. So we're not going to worry about that. The only thing I have at level 1 is Thaumaturgy. Don't have any feats at level 1. Character name, age, height, weight, eyes, hair, skin. I believe I like my name as Killian Cazador. That's uh, Killian being a nod to uh, Killy from Suikoden. And uh, Cazador, I believe, means hunter, hunt, hunt, or hunter or something in Spanish. It's also just a cool fucking word. I am ready to build my tiefling. Yeah, I haven't chosen that stuff. Okay. You don't have any gold yet. Oh, no. All right, apply changes. So that's just level one. <laughs> We have to go a little bit quicker for the level ups, but uh, this is what they look like at level one. I'm gonna have a good initiative then. If, as a revised ranger, I get advantage on my initiative, and it's already a four. That's gonna be freaking awesome. Ah, uh, later, Ruben. All right, so. And the idea is I would definitely have, and again, I don't know how to keep track of what actual equipment I should have, but I would like to wield uh, dual hand crossbows, which you could just do as this, which is, I mean, not very strong, but if you dual wield them, um, which, yeah, I get that there's a whole loading thing, but if you take crossbow expert, I believe that solves that problem. And thematically, it's the same as just firing one crossbow multiple times. I just like the visualization of, again, the demon hunter from Diablo 3, you know, spinning around, shooting people with the hand crossbows. And then as a bonus action, you could use even a third attack once once you get extra attack. So it's kind of similar to how George worked in Tomb of Annihilation, where you don't necessarily do a lot of damage at once, but you do a lot of, you do a lot of attacks. 
But if I can get all the different, you know, Hunter's Mark and those things on there, uh, especially uh, Hunter's Mark would proc on every single attack. So that would be pretty nuts. Late for me. Oh, no, I don't want to make you late. <laughs> Um, I think Ranger still has the magic. The, the main thing is it just makes your favorite enemy better, and it makes your Natural Explorer better. It just changes those two things. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. Alright, so we need to start... Oh, and then armor. Um, I don't want to do armor that makes me bad at stealth. At this point, I just assume I can pick whatever I want, like, money be damned, because... Again, we're starting at level 13, like, whatever. I'll talk to Chris about it if he's a problem. Fanto. Appreciate the sub. Um, what am I looking at? Equipment. I literally have a freaking handbook open. Armor. Although, let's see. Can medium armor fit underneath clothes? Because I really like his clothes. Actually, no. I don't want. I don't want medium armor, do I? I've got really good decks. I want light armor. I want studded leather. Studded leather gives me good ass defenses because that's got no cap on the decks. We're going to be a stud with studded leather because that should make my AC uh, 16. Yeah, 12 plus dex. And that should go up one more time uh, when I do my ASI increase. So that's, that's pretty damn good for a backline ranged attacker. And like I said, it should be a 17 by the time we're all done with this. All right. Ranger 11, Warlock 3. You know, that was my first idea. But, hear me out on this. What about, what about Warlock 5? Because if you go Warlock 5, you get third level spell slots for your two short rest spell slots. As a Fiend Warlock, I'll get access to Fireball, and I'll get a third Invocation. And I think those are way worth dipping a little bit further into Warlock. I don't know if I would go much beyond that. It really depends on how much of a caster I want to be versus the attacker, and I don't think a lot of the high-level Ranger stuff is all that sexy. And frankly, I could even throw in... I could go real crazy. I could go freaking 3rd edition crazy... And, and drop in some fighter and rogue levels in there if I wanted to. Which would be nuts, but you could do it. Um, but I really think going Warlock 5 would be pretty effective and get me at least everything I want out of my Warlock dip. I don't know if I would go any beyond that. Uh, I, I wouldn't for character creation purposes. I would definitely go... Oh shit, now you're saying Warlock 6. Marshall, why Warlock 6? Is that, is that, that's just the... Uh, so like extra D10 roll, I think you get, right? All right, now how confusing is it if I roll too many times? Let's go... So, I assume we can use our own house rules. If, we, if we're still using our house rules, I get to roll for hit points. But if, we roll, but if I roll less than the average, then I have to take the average. That's our house rules for hit points. And as far as I am aware, we're using our same house rules for everything. Uh, yeah, that's something I haven't looked like, uh, Jordan, in terms of level 20. And what's what's crazy is usually I wouldn't ever look at that, but this is in this campaign, we're actually probably going to hit level 20 by the end. It might just be like the last area, but that might be the end of it. And honestly, I'm not quite sure. Like, I've been glancing at the higher level stuff, and just higher level ranger just isn't terribly sexy to me. Um, they've got one cool ability at, like, level... Uh, let's see, assuming I go Monster Slayer, which is what I've been thinking of, and now some of you have me... Uh, rethinking that uh, you do get a cool 11th level ability as a ranger where if someone's casting a spell within 60 feet of you you can use your reaction to essentially counterspell it uh, once per short rest that's pretty good because a lot of I assume there's a lot of spell casters that's an 11 11th level ranger which if I go five warlock now we're looking at that's 16 so you know do we stop there do we keep going we, we still have more levels to play with so but I am looking at maybe at least hitting that, uh, hitting that level, hitting that ability for the monster slayer because I think that's pretty cool. Um, Horizon Walker is neat. 
God, Horizon Walker also gets banishment? Shit. And Horizon Walker gets protection from evil and good? Mmm. Those are all good things. Most demons do have fire resistance. That is a problem. Um, I was thinking about taking Elemental Adept as a feat, but now that I rolled these stats, I don't, I don't, I don't know when I'll be able to take that. So that is going to be an issue. And he is fighting fire with fire, and that could be a definite issue. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally I, I thought about, okay, I'm going to take Elemental Adept as a feat, which means you ignore... I don't think you ignore immunities, but you get to ignore their resistance, um, which would be a great feat to take, specifically if I'm hunting things that are good against fire, and I'm using a lot of fire, uh, which is... Uh, this one, Elemental Adept. You could ignore resistance to damage of the chosen type. In addition, when you roll damage for a spell that deals damage to that type, you can treat any one as a two, which not a big deal there. Man, I thought, I don't know, I was looking at Monster Slayer so much. Monster Slayer gets Slayer's Prey, which basically works like an infinite Hunter's Mark. You can just cast it. It's always on. It does take a bonus action to initially cast it, but then it's always on until you rest. Um, I think you have to use a bonus action to move it like Hunter's Mark does. It does the same damage as Hunter's Mark. The difference is it only procs once, whereas Hunter's Mark procs every time you hit somebody. So Hunter's Mark is still more effective for me as a dual wielder, but Slayer's Prey does do that extra damage every single time. And there's a neat ability at level... Uh, Six, I believe, six or seven. Uh, seven. Where if uh, the target of your slayer's prey, if they force you to make a save, you can add one d six to that roll, which would be very nice because my uh, my wisdom save is not going to be super super awesome. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to do paladin though because we already have Scarlet as a paladin, and I played a paladin last time. So I, even though that it might work. Uh, in a lot of ways, I really don't want to dip into Paladin for that reason. Uh, but I do think the 5th edition Paladin is freaking awesome. Um, so let's go... Well, let's at least go one more Ranger. We know we're doing that. So we're going to roll for hit points. But if we get less than... If we get less than 6, we get to take 6. Alright, we rolled a 6. <laughs> so we're going to take that. Uh means we're up to like 17 I'm definitely taking archery because I think two heaven fighting is just well, no, it's... but the thing is crossbow expert solves the two weapon fighting thing I believe because I think crossbow expert you just get to take an attack as a bonus action but we definitely want archery plus two bonus attack rolls no question okay so here's where we start getting into problems so, with, with the character monster. Horizon Walker is a team that makes you Nightcrawler from X-Men. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Everybody likes Nightcrawler. Um, the problem with the character monster is it says... Oh, wait. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, because uh, Thaumaturgy is a cantrip. Okay. So, it doesn't include it in here. Okay. I thought I was doing that before. Maybe it does it when I multi-class. So I get to choose two spells, but these are ranger spells. I think Absorb Elements is a pretty obvious choice because that doesn't require uh, any kind of save or anything on my turn. It's just a reaction. Anytime I take elemental damage, you gain resistance and you can deal extra damage. That's just greatness. Good level one spell that still scales pretty well, I think. Um, and then otherwise, I don't know. Like, the ranger spells just kind of suck, but we gotta take Hunter's Mark for sure. So those are obvious choices for level 2. Now, why in the hell did it give us 20 hit points? That's not right. Oh! Because I rolled a 6 plus 2 is 8 is con, and 12 plus 8 is... Yep, that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. Look, math is not my strong suit, and stupid D&D uses a lot of math. Alright, now we have a choice to make. 
we're gonna go Zephyr Strike is a good option. Ooh, I need to look at that one. I'm gonna have definitely plenty of spell choices. All right, we know we're gonna want another Ranger here. We're gonna roll, see what we get. Wow, is this thing working? We rolled another, another average. Okay. Really? All right. I'll look at I'll look at Zephyr Strike. Does it work with uh, ranged attacks? I would hope so. If it's a ranger spell. So I've been thinking Monster Slayer this whole time. Some of you have me doubting that, though. Because protection from evil and good is an amazing spell to have. It is concentration, but God, what's interesting is I could actually cast that on one of the frontline people. I could actually cast that on Tim or Scarlet before a battle. It lasts 10 minutes. And then they have disadvantage against that target. As long as I... The bad thing is, if I want to have Hunter's Mark up, I can't concentrate on anything else. So that's... Uh, there's a lot of action economy with the bonus actions and the concentration. And Hunter's Mark is going to be so good for me. Misty Step is a very good spell. Haste is a very good spell, though also Concentration. Banishment would be particularly good against Demons. If I make it all the way up to 13th Ranger, though. The Horizon Walker definitely gets better spells than the Monster Slayer. Horizon Walker can... It's a bonus action. Choose a creature within 30 feet of them. Next time you hit that creature on this turn with a weapon attack, all damage dealt by the attack becomes force damage. And the creature takes an extra 1d8 force damage from the attack. Uh, choices, choices. I know, it seems so good. What's your ranger flavor? What do you do in battles? So, I know. The part of, uh, the stressful thing is I have to I have to build a level 13 character having never played them before and never played anything like this before. So it's it's a huge challenge because it's so much theory crafting and then all of a sudden I have to apply that. Um what I'm picturing primarily is attacking with crossbows, throwing up a few spells here and there, kind of similar to how Kazan played, which was mostly attacking but occasionally throwing down spells when needed. And spells could be used to supplement the attacks or to do some big, you know, in Kazan's case, it was a lot of crowd control type spells. Um, that's probably what I'm picturing. And definitely, like, backline because, you know, it's just all of his shit is ranged. Although, if, you know, if people get in his face, I, I don't have a good thing to do for that. I guess I could take I could take Misty Step as a spell and those kind of things as a as a special getaway. Are you playing the I know. I think it's just a force damage. Ask Heather her opinion. Heather, should I take Horizon Walker or the Monster Slayer? Oh. I mean they both get good spells. What's Horizon Walker? I've never heard of this one. Yeah. He's all about teleporting around Guards the world against threats that originate from other planes or that seek to ravage the mortal realm with otherworldly magic. So you could easily flavor that as a demon hunter because obviously demons come from different planes. Venturing to the inner planes and the outer planes as needed to pursue their foes. Also friends any forces in the multiverse, especially benevolent dragons, fey, and elementals that work to preserve life and the order of the planes. I don't know. That means you and I would get along too well. And I've already been... Uh, planning ways to antagonize you a little bit. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I, I do... Uh, my methods are probably a lot darker because I, I use demon magic and I made a pact with a demon. So, there's still plenty of... I don't know. That that lends to being more, like, good. And then the monster slayer is you have dedicated yourself to hunting down creatures of the night and wielders of grim magic. See, that feels more... Yeah, monster slayer seeks out vampires, dragons, evil fey, fiends, and other magical threats. That seems more in line with what you and I have talked about. With that does the, seem more in line, yeah. Wanting to. The, the horizon walker probably would be cool, but... Yeah, now that I'm reading them again. The, the, the monster slayer is more in line with what you thought your, your 
character was going to be. Yeah. Um, it could just be because you didn't know about Horizon Walker at the time, but Monster Slayer still fits that that theme and um, what you talked about wanting to be able to do with this character. Yeah, I forgot you also get Hunter's Sense where you can... <laughs> it's like that house rule we have where you can roll something, but at this one it's just... As an action, you immediately know all damage immunities, resistances, and vulnerabilities of any creature, which is going to come in hugely handy because most likely Gris is going to throw shit at us that we've never seen before. So as an action, I can just decide what the hell that thing is if I need to. All right, so I like Monster Slayer. That was a Xanathar's one, okay. So, did you see my stat rolls? And they're in the chat, so they're legit. But I actually rolled an 18 on one of them. Oh, wow. Yeah. What did it add up to? More than 72, obviously. Yeah, it was, uh, this is what I'm, I'm at at level 1. Oh, you're still on level 1? Or no, well, I, uh, I'm at level uh, three, 3 now. Oh, yeah. Jesus. But obviously my stats haven't increased since then. It's going to take forever. I know. <laughs> it's a big deal. I'm going to try to go a little bit quicker now really? that I... Really? Killian? I got... Yeah. Along with Gillian? Oh, that's true. There's a Killian. Shit, I didn't think about that. Come on, chat. Help him out here. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Oh, that's true. I might have to change that. Cazador? Really? I'm going to have to change that. Shoot. I know. And the bad thing is, if I just do Cazador, it's a little bit too similar to Kazan. Mm -hmm. I have a certain name that I like. Hmm? Just do Cazador. Because it sounds too much like Kazan, don't you think? No. You think that's better than Gillian versus Gillian? Yes. Yeah, that's probably bad. Dang it, I totally forgot about that. That's a good point. All See? right. Don't tell me to go back to sleep next time. I'm, uh, I'm here to help. Well, how did you at least get a couple hours? Yeah. All right. I'm hungry. Yeah. I'm glad that kiddo's still sleeping, though. Me too. <laughs> Timmy and... <laughs> we should just do all... <laughs> Chat's just giving us some suggestions. I like it. Killian and Gillian make a great tag team. I don't know. Uh, you, you I didn't even be, think uh, about it. I didn't even think about it. You could be uh, like a brother from another mother for her or something. Uh huh. Since you're a tiefling. Tiefling and Triton, sure. Yeah, you know, could be. You realize you're gonna have to help me do this. I know. This is a lot point, going on. Right? Well, and since I'm using the revised ranger, I'm gonna have to re-edit like a lot of that shit too, because yeah, that shit's that not point. in. Yeah. That's not in here. Which I mean, thankfully the character monster is pretty good about most stuff, but. I think I'm going to run into some issues when I start multi-classing and having, like, multiple, mm -hmm. like, spell things to worry about. But at least it's a good baseline. Yeah, you are going to have to help me with mine. Yeah. Just putting that out there. So we can add one new spell. I automatically get protection from evil and good. Okay, so it looks like it's doing it correctly, then, because it's giving my sub-race spell and my class spell, and it's not counting against it. All right, so y'all were talking about Zephyr Strike. Kilgore Trout. Kilgore. I, I, yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to re, uh, re-workshop the name, unfortunately. Ah, Killian would be so good, too, but it's, it's way too similar to Gillian. Or I could do it, I mean, I could do it like Mannix and just go by the last name, Cazador. But, I don't know, I feel like I'm making too many Kaz-type names. Kilgore Castor is the best over all day. That's a terrible name. I don't know. Kilgore Castor. Oh, uh, that's I don't know if that's a good cadence to it. You move like the wind. Until the spell ends, your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks. Ooh, so an instantly get out of jail free. And it's a bonus action. Once before the spell ends, which it lasts for a minute, you give yourself advantage on a weapon attack on your roll. The attack deals an extra 1d8 force damage on a hit. Whether you hit or miss, your walking speed increases by 30 feet till the end of that turn. Yeah, that's great. Just for that first sentence, you basically get a free disengage as a bonus action. That's a good use of a ranger spell, I say. I like it. Rob, the campaign is starting in two weeks. August 14th is going to be session zero, which... Uh, it'll basically be us coming together, talking about our characters, and sharing them. Because right now, nobody knows the, who the hell my character is. Um... And maybe some folks will be leveling up to 13, because I don't know at what point. I think Chris said he's actually going to be uh, around Friday night and to do some character discussion. So uh, we'll be looking at that. We'll, we will be having a session zero 
obviously not going to be the full length of a normal session, but that'll be uh, on August 14th. All right, so apply changes. We're still three. I wonder if I should go ahead and multi-class now, if that would be handy, just to start seeing that stuff in here. Now, this I don't like. It adds the attack modifier as a as a global attack modifier. I think that's bad because the way it looks in the chat is not good. Okay, it didn't do it. What the hell? There it goes. Okay, so I don't like that it looks that it does the math out like that. Like I don't want to do extra math. And I would all I'm never going to turn my fighting style off. So I think it would be better just to plug that that, that archery into this actual main thing. So I think I'm just going to turn this off and just give it a global plus 2 because I'm never going to have archery off. And then, it, and then it shows up as a plus four, which is my dex, plus two, which is proficiency, proficiency bonus, and then plus two, which is from uh, the archery fighting style. Plus eight. That's not too bad. All right. Um, and what's nice is it does automatically add, add things in here, although I can make those changes for sure. And for Hunter's Mark purposes, what we can do is add that as a uh, global damage modifier. Let's just get rid of the attack one. And turn that into uh, Hunter's Mark, which is a 1d6. Which means every time that's up... So if we wanted to attack with the hand crossbow and then click on damage... You can see there, we can. it's like sneak attack, like the way sneak attack works. You can click that badass mid kill shit. Yeah, you get like a plus like four or five or six. It's just, it's freaking insane. You become just godlike at that point. But that's a really good way of applying Hunter's Mark. And same thing with Slayer's Prey, which is literally the exact same 1d6. And it could stack with Hunter's... If I, the bad thing is all of this shit is a bonus action. So literally... You would have to set up a bonus action to turn on Slayer's Prey, a bonus action to turn on Hunter's Mark, and then, so you wouldn't—I wouldn't be able to use my uh, bonus action as a third attack until like the third round. In theory, if I wanted to set all that shit up, but if we were fighting a really big fight, that might be worth doing. Although, if we sneak up into a fight, then I could try and unleash some of this stuff uh, stealthily, if it's possible to get off Hunter's Mark. And Slayer's Prey, especially Slayer's Prey. I don't think there's a spell at all. Oh shit, and I need to put my uh, favorite enemy in here too. Because I could potentially do a shit ton of damage if all this stuff is actually plugged in. Which, at the level I'm going to hit, is going to be an extra four. It's just straight up four. Which is how the revised ranger works. Um, at the beginning, you get a plus two bonus to damage rolls with the weapon attacks against creatures of the chosen type. And then at level. Scrolling down. Level six, I'll get. That'll, it increases the bonus to plus four. So I've got all of. Potentially, if I'm fighting demons or humanoids, I would have an insane amount of damage plugged in. Let's just see what that looks like. With a single attack. Haha, <laughs> look at that. That's like having a sneak attack, basically. Now, that'd be pretty rare if it was all... If it was all on... I mean, it had to be a fiend. I would have had to move Hunter's Mark onto it and Slayer's Prey. So the odds of having all of that lined up is probably not going to come into play, except for maybe giant boss fights. But... The fact that I can proc that once per fight, and then I'll have to click off Slayer's Prey uh, for extra attacks, because unfortunately it only goes off the first time in a turn. But that's kind of cool the way Roll20's got that set up. Uh, Alright, so I think it's time to multi-class. This has already gone on way longer than I expected. What is your tiefling virtue? I don't know what you mean by that. Is that a special tiefling thing? We are 
not going to go Ranger this level. Instead, we're going to multi-class into Warlock. And we're going to go one level into Warlock. Which is going to put us at level four. We're going to choose the Fiend. Which is going to give us Dark One's Blessing, which is a really neat ability. Every time you basically take somebody down, uh, you gain hit points equal to your Charisma plus your Warlock level. Which should be pretty, should be pretty solid. Um, we can roll. We're gonna have fewer hit points than a startup ranger, but not by much. Uh, four, I believe, is less than the average of an eight, which five is the average. So, just take the average then. Okay. Fiend Warlock gives us two first level spells and two cantrips. So now let's see if it can keep track of this correctly. Okay, it does. So we've already got Thaumaturgy as part of our sub race, so we can choose two cantrips and two first level spells. Actually don't know what spells to take. <laughs> Whoops, I haven't thought about this. Um, what are good cantrips? Probably Mage Hand. Mage Hand's always good. I mean, Eldritch, you kind of have to take Eldritch Blast just to have it, but I really don't want to rely on it too much. But it's so damn good. 120 feet, what is the range of a hand crossbow? So I'm going to actually have to use Warlock of the Kraken. That's so cool, that's a thing. Let's see, hand crossbow range is... Yikes, hand crossbow has terrible range. So beyond 30, it's disadvantage? Is that how that works? And then 120 is just the max. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. So I'm going to get in kind of close to people. Um, so maybe... maybe uh, yeah, I think I'll just go ahead and take Eldritch Blast just to have it. Oh, chill. everybody's saying Chill Touch. Why Chill Touch? I don't want to touch people. Oh. Wait, why is it called Chill Touch when it's 120 feet range? You create a ghostly skeletal hand in the space of a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack against the creature to assail it with the chill of the grave. On a target, on a hit, the target takes 1d8 necrotic damage and it can't regain hit points. Mm. And it clings to the target. If you hit an undead target, also has disadvantage. The spell's damage increases by 1d8 when you reach 5th level, 11th level, and 17th level. So at that level, it'd be 3d8 necrotic damage and it can't regain hit points. I still can't imagine I would ever want to necessarily use that instead of my attack and extra attack and bonus attack. <laughs> um, I guess if somebody was healing, maybe that could come in handy. Later, Lumpy. <laughs> I know I don't usually stream this long, so I'm having folks having to having to go and actually do things. It's an extra long, super sized special episode. Um. Yeah, I could probably do Chill Touch. Some new ones I haven't seen before. Infestation, Parasites, 30 feet. Frostbite, 60 feet. Target takes cold damage. It's disadvantage the next weapon attack roll. Dark Maw. Thick penumbral ichor drips from your shadow-stained mouth. What is this description? <laughs> Filling your mouth with giant shadow fangs. Good lord. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. Make a melee spell attack. On a hit, the target takes 1d8 necrotic damage as your shadowy fangs sink into it. Wow. You can add your spell casting ability modifier to the damage roll, but not to the temporary hit points. If you hit a humanoid target, you gain 1d4 temporary. Just, it's just fucking a vampire attack. That's all it is. That's pretty crazy. Cleric, sorcerer, warlock, and wizard. Necromancy. Cantrip. Huh. That's interesting. Um, being in melee with a crossbow does not result in disadvantage. True. Yeah. So I will 
the idea is I will use my crossbows for everything. Unfortunately, if they're really far out of range, Eldritch Blast may actually come in handy there because it's got a 120 foot range. So if something's really far away from my crossbows, it would be better to just Eldritch Blast them and slash set up any kind of bonus action spells. So Eldritch Blast and Mage Hand 2, and then I get to choose two first level Warlock spells. And I automatically get, or do I still have to, I guess I still have to learn them, don't I? Let's see, where's Warlock? I only automatically get the Ranger ones. I guess Warlock, I still have to choose them. Okay, you choose from an expanded list of spells. So I've got all the Warlock spells plus Burning Hands and Command at first level that I could choose from, but I still can only choose two. Hmm. I don't think I need Hex if I've already got Hunter's Mark. That's way too much. I mean, technically you could stack all those things. Or no, you couldn't because that's concentration. So I think that's uh, not really useful. What's interesting is I could I could cast Hunter's Mark with my Warlock spell slots. And at some point they're going to be third level, which means if I want to have a just be that my concentration spell, it lasts for eight hours. So you could just constantly have that up. The bummer is if you ever do another spell that requires concentration, that turns it off. Disquieting Gaze. I've added new spells since I last saw this. Your eyes burn with scintillating motes of unholy crimson light. God, your sorcerer would fucking love that. No, this is some bullshit. Until the spell ends, you advantage on intimidation checks made against creatures you can see, and you advantage on spell attack rolls that deal necrotic damage to creatures that can see your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I didn't really do necrotic damage. That's true, yeah. It seems like that goes with the, um, that one I just, that biting one, though, because mm -hmm. that was necrotic. I don't know where these things came from, just quieting gaze. It's a different format, too. I don't know what, then, uh, the way these look. These look like they actually, it's got the little sepia tone thing. I wonder if they're Earth Darkana. Maybe. Ooh, Hellish Rebuke. Yeah, that's for sure a good one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the reaction. does fire damage. Highly recommend that. If somebody one. attacks me, you get, you get the rebuke. Which, between that and, and Absorb Elements, I've got some good reaction stuff to do. How about you point your finger? <laughs> the creature that damaged you is momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. Can't cast Warlock spells with Ranger slots. Are we sure about that? Because they are wisdom-based and not charisma. I will look that up. But that is something I will need to know. Um, I don't think I want to do Charm Person. Burning Hands, although I'm probably going to take Fireball also. Burning Hands is real close. Yeah, but I'm going to have to be kind of close, because my if I want to use my hand crossbows, i got to be within 30 feet. So I'm not actually going to be that far back. But... Armor of Agathis. I don't really need the extra temporary hit points. Arms of Adar is fun. Tendrils of Dark Energy erupt from you and batter all creatures within 10 feet of you. That's another one where if they attack me, if I'm surrounded by enemies for some reason, I could do that. Yes, they are. I, I'm aware of that, but I don't... I'm not aware of any restrictions on what you can cast with what I mean they're just spell slots in the end but I will look up that information I know I was going back and forth with uh, paladin and warlock spells when I was doing that multi-class uh, which bolt is pretty crappy or there's command which can kind of come in handy as uh... I think I'll have that one uh, will you? I think so yeah that is a cleric paladin spell are you actually going to take it? I think it comes with one of my, my devotions. Gotcha. Yeah, you can command people to, like, halt or approach or flee. That's kind of cool. Right. I'm, they still, they're still tied to the attributes. I just don't know if they have to actually use those particular spell slots. Um, let's see, cause fear. A 
construct or when it is immune and target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw become frightened of you until the spell ends so it's just a uh, targeted fear I kind of like the idea of demons being afraid of me and if you use a higher level spell slot you can target additional so it's like a multi isn't it the same thing as the literal fear spell though what point is that different Yeah, because there's a fear spell. Interesting, this is illusion, and this is necromancy also. Wisdom save, wisdom save. Each creature in a 30-foot cone. So this one, they drop what they're holding and become frightened of you. Okay, fear, they actually have to use the dash action to move away from you. That's not part of cause fear. Cause fear, they just have the frightened condition. Which I think is still a disadvantage. Yeah. I can't move closer. Okay. I like that. I'll do cause fear. Oh, shit. <laughs> Marshall, once again, it just reminds me that most fiends are immune to fear. Mm -hmm. Curses! Well, that's where that hunter's sense will come from. <laughs> fear. I'll have to use that freaking hunter's sense all the time on these new demons. At what level is your imp gonna be like, oh shit, when we come up against like a <laughs> I, really powerful demon? I know. Demon. I need to lock that down on the imp's personality and what the imp knows. Mm -hmm. So I imagine it wouldn't care. Like it's an imp. It's basically immortal. Um, it's happy to be along for the ride. But I mean, it loves tormenting the demon hunter. And still, at some point, it would see some level of a demon. That's true. Right? I could roleplay it like, oh, you're going you're gonna to get your ass kicked by this one. <laughs> are you Are you sure you want to use that spell, boss? Because <laughs> that's not going to do shit to him. I'll be like, ah. Uh. Told you. That's probably exactly how I'm going to flavor the hunter's sense, too. It's actually the demon just, like, telling him the information. Like, ah, uh, fire's no good here. Or make it sarcastic. Oh, yeah, definitely use fire. Fire's great. <laughs> All right, let's go. More warlock. More warlock, please. No ranger. One more warlock. One at a time to make sure we don't screw anything up. All right, roll for hit points. Holy crap, I have never once rolled. Or no, that was technically above average. A six is above average for a freaking warlock dice. Okay. Um, so we'll take that. What do I get? Uh, invocations. Invocations. So this is another good choice, but even though tieflings have dark vision, I want to take devil sight because that gives me 120 feet of dark vision and it's better than dark vision because it's not shades of gray. It's you can see normally in darkness and both magical and non-magical. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, to 120 feet. So darkness, any of that, doesn't matter. I will see everything. Which is also good because you'll be seeing the stream from my point of view. So <laughs> I won't have any of those uh, dark line of sight issues. So definitely devil sight. I think it's one of the best invocations in general. Unfortunately, I don't know Jack and Dexter, Brian, so your reference is lost on me. But I assume they are a... Uh, a hilarious pair that get into each other's heads. Um, otherwise, invocation-wise, I mean, I'm not really going to use Eldritch Blast that much if I can help it. Mm -hmm. um, there are two ones with Pact of the Chain, which technically I can't legally choose that now, but every level you can replace an invocation, so I would do it next level. Um, which, one of them doesn't seem to make much sense. It's like you can talk through your familiar, like you already get fine familiar as a Pact of the Chain, so you can do all the familiar stuff. But the good one is Gift of the of the Ever-Living Ones. As long as your familiar is in 100 feet of you, any dice rolled to determine the hit points you regain um, are treated as if they rolled their maximum value. So anytime you heal, whether that's a healing spell or a short rest dice, you always roll the maximum amount. 
So that just seems nice, I guess. Better healing. That's really like the one good like pack to the chain feature. Because unfortunately, if I'm not going much into Warlock, uh, I'm not actually going to get a lot of the higher level invocations. The more popular Ratchet and Clank. Oh, maybe that one too. Uh, all right, so Devil Sight and Gift Lover, everyone's. We'll take that one. I mean, technically, I don't have back to the chain yet, but I will in a second. Uh, I can add one new spell. I'm still only level one. I guess I could probably replace it in the future. Um, we just take Arms of Hadar or Burning Hands. Arms of Hadar is in a ten foot radius around me. Tendrils of dark energy erupt and batter all creatures within 10 feet of me. Must a strength save. On a failed save, they take necrotic damage and can't take reactions. So it's another, like, get out of jail free card. But in theory, I would not cast this spell very often. But I think that's probably the best one to take. It's either that or Burning Hands. And Burning Hands does good damage. We'll take arms for now. Okay, so I'm now level f five, I think. Yep. Moving right along. Next. Oh, kind of probably finish out the warlock class here. Alright, Pact Boon. Let's roll for my Warlock. We got average again. Really average on the hit points so far. Alright, back to the chain. Get a familiar. Get my Imp Friend. Additionally, when I can take the attack action, I can forego one of my attacks to allow my familiar to make one attack of its own. I don't know when I would ever do that because I assume my attacks are going to be much better. Even though, uh, as far as familiars go, Imp is actually pretty strong. But it's way better for its uh, utility than it is its attacking. But, but the imp has an insanely cool ability when it's a familiar. And that is not shown here. Shit. Uh, where? Hmm. Hmm. Well, I thought it was a good ability. Is it under the familiar? Whoops. Let's see here. Familiar. You can cast a spell at range of touch. Can familiar fill in? You make direction. Uh, well, I don't know where I saw that then, but I thought. Imp was listed somewhere where it gave you its magic resistance if it was within 10 feet of you, but now I can't see that, so I don't know if... I'd have to look that one up, too. If it, Specifically, if an Imp is a familiar, it grants you its magic resistance if it's within 10 feet of you, which is huge. Advantage on saving throws against spells and other magical effects. Uh, but I don't see that in Roll20, so I'll have to find that information out. These are still arguing about the spell slots. Holy crap. Somebody look that information up. I'm sure the information is out there somewhere. Um, all I know is, is I went easily back and forth between Paladin and, and Warlock spell slots with my last character. Alright, so... Pack the chain. We get one new spell, which I should be at yeah, level 2 now. And now I can replace a level 1 spell with a 2, so... I could get rid of one of these, like Arms of Hadar... So the new ones I have as the Warlock is Blindness, Deafness, and Scorching Ray. But there are lots of good level 2 spells. There's Hold Person, there's Invisibility, there's Misty Step, Darkness. I mean, Blindness is a good spell. The only thing is I have to be cognizant about Concentration spells, and basically everything that's not an attack is... is 
pretty much a concentration. Uh, Misty Step could still be really worth having, though. Although it's a bummer to use Misty Step as a, as a Warlock spell slot, because you don't have very many of those. But teleporting 30 feet could be very handy. Uh, Scorching Ray. That's what I totally did, Aussie. I did that with Storm King's Thunder. I was using Warlock spell slots to uh, as Divine Smites. Although, actually, more often than not, I was, I was actually casting spells. Create three rays of fire and hurl them at targets in the range. You can hurl them at one target or several. Make a ranged spell attack for each ray on a hit. The target takes 2d6 fire damage. The only bummer, I mean, I get a lot of good spells, but honestly, I think my attacks are going to be probably more effective. So I almost want to take more defense. Ooh, mirror image doesn't isn't concentration, is it? Yeah, that spell's amazing. You can duplicate yourself. That's a, such a good defensive ability. That is a good one. I mean, invisibility is good in terms of uh, not necessarily taking damage abilities. Blindness is a really good use of concentration, especially if you can blind multiple foes with a con save. Energy blasting spells are good. I mean, that's what Eldritch Blast is literally that. Scorching Ray, you do get to make three attacks, which is cool. The only bummer is I wish I wish the Hunter's Mark and those kind of things um, would proc off that, but none of my range abilities would actually proc off of the spells. So, like, once I put those Hunter's Mark-type spells down, I'm going to really want to attack as much as possible and not actually fling these spells. Here you go. It's under Pact Magic. Because that's where your spell slots are coming from with your Warlock is your Pact Magic, right? Yeah. So if you have both the spellcasting class feature and the Pact Magic class feature from the Warlock class, you can use the spell slots you gain from the Pact Magic feature to cast spells you know or have prepared from classes with the spellcasting class feature. And you can use the spell slots you gain from the spellcasting class feature to cast Warlock spells you know. So the spell slots are used across the board. And what's that from? Uh, some 5th edition SRD thing. Okay. I mean, I think it's probably that's probably the rule that we use. Yeah. It it definitely becomes more headachey for multi class purposes. You have to keep it even it's more strict. But down the, the, um, yeah. The, the only guide. for this character, the only one I could see that being useful for is if I use if I use a uh, warlock spell slot to cast Hunter's Mark, then I can keep it up. Uh, and in theory. Especially if you're allowed to keep up concentration while short resting. Which I think you are. Not long resting, obviously, but short resting. You could cast Hunter's Mark, regain the spell slot on a short rest. Um, Not necessarily. Oh, is that what you're looking up now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Just because it lasts a long time if you use a higher spell slot. That's a lot of complicated so, things, though, that... I'm yeah, not terribly is, interested in cheesing the system that much. <laughs> yeah. You determine your available spell slots by adding together all your levels in the Bard, Cleric, Druid, Sorcerer, and Wizard classes and half your levels rounded down in the Paladin and Ranger classes. Use this total to determine your spell slots by consulting the multi-class spellcaster table. That's if you've got multiple regular spell slots. Mm -hmm. The problem is Warlock works differently. Because of the pact magic. Because of the pact magic. Yeah, it's yeah. technically not spellcasting, it's pact magic. Yeah. yeah, so that's why it has the pact magic one down here, which talks about the fact that you can use... Um, you just gain those as... Yeah, you can use the spell slots for your pact magic spells, or you can use your pact magic spells in your spell slots. Yeah. Suggestions always a really fun spell. Hmm. Yeah. What do we think? Mirror Image is just really good to... F I mean, the bad thing is I'm going to fall into the same trap of, of casting the same spells I did with Kazan. Do do I know. What, would it, what kind of spells would a Demon Hunter have? Specifically, stuff that would be good against demons. Mm -hmm. um, darkness probably Not so much. doesn't help. Although, darkness is great for me because I can see through darkness. 
And even though people have dark vision, they can't see through magical darkness. But I can with Devil's Sight. Mm -hmm. So I could lay down darkness and be the only one that could see targets. Now it would screw you guys up, so I'd be careful about, mm -hmm. you know, how I use it. But if I could separate, you know, some foes and use darkness on them. Unfortunately, it's once again another concentration spell, so... It's a bomb. I mean, pretty much every spell at this point has concentration. Yeah, I did take uh, Gift of the Ever Living One. And yes, Hex and Hunter's Mark are almost exactly the same. Yep, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of overlapping stuff. And again, this is not the most optimal characters. I'm just trying to make the most optimum build out of this crazy character that I've got. So I think Darkness is a cool combo. And if I want to take another level two spell, I actually have to get rid of my one of my level ones, which is. Probably not a bad way to handle it. I could replace either Cause Fear or Arms of Hadar. Let's get rid of Arms. Replace that with what? Yeah, I really like Darkness. Are there going to be different types of demons you fight, or are they all the same? That's a great question for Chris. We'll ask Chris that. I'm sure he'll tell us. Exactly <laughs> what kind of demons will be facing. I have no idea. And it's not just demons. We're fighting celestials, too, I think. It's, it's all a big war. Maybe we'll be working with demons at some point, which my character would not be a fan of at all. But, or mine. Uh, yeah. That would take some convincing. Um, Bless your heart. I have no idea. I mean, there's different kinds of demons out there. I don't know what he would be using. I'm sure he's excited about using a lot of different kinds of enemies. So, unfortunately, I do not know. You better give me some damn good armor. Yeah, many demons are immune to fear. I guess I could replace cause fear. Uh man. I like the idea of a uh, scaring a demon away. Mm -hmm. You have to replace arms. Yeah, do I like arms better? Arms is the one where tentacles emerge around me in a ten foot radius, dealing damage to everything around me. That's cool. Yeah. You gotta keep that. Alright, I'll keep that one. Take arms. We'll lose fear. At some point, he decides a lot of demons are immune to fear. <laughs> finally listens to the imp. Yeah, finally listens to the imp. Uh, let's see. Mirror image would be great defensively. It does not require concentration. It only lasts for a minute, but I know a few times I was able to get that off before combat started. Yeah, Misty Step is very good. It's a it's a real shame to burn a Warlock spell slot to use it because it doesn't do any it doesn't scale. Um, but yeah, being able to bonus action teleport is super handy. And honestly, between that, I would be having no offensive damage when it comes to uh, my level two spell slots at least yet. So that's not a bad move. Let's take Misty Step, get that get that movement. Yeah, I, I don't know. If we're, I don't know if we're exclusively going to be fighting. I mean, there might be some humanoids. Either, you know, other factions. I have no idea. I don't. I don't. I need to get away. Like my character does specifically hunt demons, but I don't think we're only going to be facing demons. And one of my uh, favorite enemies is going to be humanoid because I figure, uh, you know, thematically, obviously, a lot of humanoids cavort with demons, so you'd have to be working with them. So, hold person would be very good to take. Yes, they're called cultists. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> demon cultists. All right, so now we are a. Wait. Why am I the fiend warlock one? That's not good. What did I do? Okay, it's just not showing up correctly. I don't know why it shows one there. I should be a three warlock. Okay, well, let's see what happens if I click apply changes. So we're doing it every step of the way. And I've literally got it on tape. i can review the tape if necessary. Okay, there it goes. That's normal. Alright, we're now level 6. Level 6. I think we're going to keep taking... Now, I guess I'll take more Ranger. Cause I, but I do think I want to go further into Warlock. Because I, I do like the idea of gaining access to Fireball. One more Invocation and 3rd level Spell Slots. More than I necessarily do having those other Ranger abilities. Yeah, Detect Thoughts will be good for that interrogation, too. Alright, so let's take some more Ranger levels. We get our first ability score increase. Let's roll for hit points. Holy crap, I swear this thing's broken. 
average every time. You're gonna be so average. I'm gonna be so average. His name is Average O. There you go. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> um, this one is a pretty easy choice. I pretty much have to pick Crossbow Expert if I want to make this build work. Which allows me to. Do you want to bring something? Ignore the loading. Um, I'll try to wrap up here in the next 15 minutes or so and you need something because I'm starving. Being within five feet of hostile creatures doesn't impose disadvantage in attack rolls, so I can always use my crossbows, and when I use the attack action, I attack with a one-headed weapon, which could be a hand crossbow, I can use a bonus action to attack with a hand crossbow you are holding. <laughs> so, in theory, if I'm not using my bonus action, I can get three attacks off, because I can do attack, extra attack, and bonus action attack. Um, but, obviously I've got a lot of stuff competing for bonus action. That's true, Jeff. I might be taking too many escapes um, I just figure Chris will uh, want to have his sweet revenge on on my not quite as defensive character. although I think I'm going to be in better shape than Manix I'll have a much better armor class for sure okay. although he did have shield okay. fire will become useless with elemental adept which you probably can't fit in yeah I was initially going to take that as my uh, second uh, uh, feat the one at level 8, but I'll be taking the ability score improvement, so... I mean, you know, I just won't be able to use it as much dur against demons that are immune to fire, or resistant to fire, but as I mentioned, we... I don't think we'll be fighting that stuff exclusively. Fireball is just such a sexy spell, like, the damage is insane. So, all I gained that level was Crossbow Expert. And, I guess, more spell slots. I don't actually get any new Ranger spells? At level, I guess not. Is that really true? Do you not? Do you only get ranger spells every so often? Or is it based on a? What does it say? Spell casting. Uh. Additionally, when you gain a level in this class, you can choose one of the ranger spells and replace it. How does that work? Spells known column. Oh, yeah, it's true. You only gain uh, every other level you gain a new spell. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, Zephyr Strike is a level 1 spell. I don't know why it's... Oh, that that's... It's showing me how much I increased it, not the total. That's what's throwing me off. So I increased this by 1 to make it a 4. I increased this by... Well, no, it still doesn't. Visually, that's just bad UI. It should show me the total level at the end. <laughs> Okay, so now we're a level 7 character. We've got Crossbow Expert plugged in. You can see it's adding all these things in here, which is nice, but I'll have to clean this up later. Make sure I have it exactly how I want it to appear. So we're going to take more Ranger. Now we get extra attack. And this is the nice thing about it. This is such a disaster multi-class character, but the fact that I get to start at such a high level means I don't have to worry about all those awkward levels for example, waiting until level freaking 8 to get extra attack would be awful if you were normally playing this character. Roll for hit points. I rolled below average that time, so let's take the average. Jesus Christ, my, my HP rolls, you know, as good as my stat bonuses were, my HP rolls are not good. Um, we get the Monster Slayer, which means I get Slayer's Prey, I think, and extra attack, I guess. Oh, Monster Slayer Magic. Okay. I gain Zone of Truth, which is another good interrogation spell. Do I actually get a spell on top of that also? It's actually Character Module is doing a good job. It's only showing me the spells that I think I can take, which now opens up level 2 Ranger spells of which I can only take one, but I could replace a level one ranger spell with a level two one, although I think Absorb Elements and Hunter's Mark are still good spells. Do I really, is this only my third spell I get? No, it should be my fourth one. So am I missing a spell? Absorb Elements, Hunter's Mark, Oh, does that count as a spell then? Protection from evil and good? Oh, Zephyr Strike. That's what it is. 
Okay, so there's three. Okay, so I can take one more second level spell, which I automatically get Zone of Truth as a Monster Slayer. So now I can pick something else. Um, I have heard that Healing Spirit is a bullshit spell of the highest order. Because I don't think it has... It lasts a minute, but it works... It works in rounds, doesn't it? Remember a creature you can see moves in the spirit space for the first time in a turn, or starts its turn there, you can cause the spirit to restore 1d6 hit points to the creature. You can heal a number of times equal... Oh, maybe that's the errata. The spirit can heal a number of times equal to 1 plus your spellcasting ability modifier, which would unfortunately be wisdom, which is not as good. So would I actually not be able to heal that many times? Okay. And we're going to have a cleric and a paladin, so I don't think I need... Yeah, it looks like that. And I think that's the new wording, right? It's it's limited. Yeah, and it's concentration. Stupid concentration, that's how they get you. I mean, normally I would take something like Lissa Restoration, but I think we're going to have plenty of access to these kind of spells between having a cleric and a paladin. Um, don't think... Does Ranger get Scorching Ray? I don't think I could take Scorching Ray. This is my Ranger level. Um, I don't know. Ranger spells suck. Stench of Rot. Silence could be really good against Spellcasters, though. I mean, it sucks that... I, you have to just juggle all... Like, is it better to Hunter's Mark? Is it better to Darkness? Is it better to... You know, you have to juggle all these concentration choices. Target Reeks of Death and Rot. Disadvantage all Charisma checks and con saves. Okay, that's kind of dumb. Ooh, I do like Pass Without Trace. Yeah, that's true. And we don't have any other access to it. So in terms of stealth... Plus 10 bonus to stealth. Okay. That's probably a good use of it then. Just another out of combat utility thing to do. Because again, in combat, probably not want to cast too many spells that aren't bonus actions. Yeah, silence would be the other one I would pick. Silence. Just because high level spell casters. Um, although Claire gets access to silence, so there's a good chance. And Bard. There's a good chance somebody will have silence. Whereas Pass Without Trace uh, is only Druid or Ranger, so I feel like that's probably a better option. Because I don't exactly know what my other party members are going to look like. Other than probably Gillian's the only one I've got a good beat on. Just because we just played with her. Alright. So that works. We are a little eight... Go more ranger. This is a process. I did not realize it would be a two hour plus process. So I appreciate all of you sticking with me. Um, let's roll. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hit point rolls are so bad. So bad. Oh man, it's comical. All right. We get better favorite enemy, and what comes next? Ranger 6 is the other Monster Slayer feature. Which one is that? So definitely picking fiends. I get another language. Ha! <laughs> Celestial will be the other. I mean, I would just cover all our bases. I guess if you're hunting demons, would it be useful to hunt Celestials too? know all the languages don't need to worry about natural explorer we're not going to care about any of that shit um no spell changes here doesn't let me even replace them if i'm not getting a spell huh okay and i gain what spell slots i guess did it show me my 
What was the thing that I got? I guess it was just a better favorite enemy. Okay. Which makes this go from a 2 to a 4, which I've already plugged in. Alright, so now we're level 9. Let's go more Ranger. Supernatural Defense is a really good one and a good use of Slayer's Prey because... Oh, I thought it would just show me Supernatural Defense. Okay. Um, whenever the target of your Slayer's Prey forces you to make a saving throw, or if you try to escape a grapple, you add 1d6 to your roll. That's really nice. Um, I have to turn on Slayer's Prey first, but that makes Slayer's Prey more important at this point because instantly I add a 1d6 to all my saves from that particular target. Really good against big demon boss fights, too. Roll for hit points. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Amazingly bad with the hit point rolls. Just amazing. I might as well be clicking average every time. Hilarious. Alright, so we got the resistance. I get one new ranger spell at level 2. Um, what were the other ones he said? Cordon of Arrows. Aha, it's not a concentration. You plant four pieces of non-magical ammunition in the ground within range and lay magic upon them. Until the spell ends, whenever a creature other than you comes within 30 feet of the ammunition for the first time on a turn or ends its turn there, one piece of ammunition flies up to strike it. The creature must succeed in a deck saving throw or take 1d6 piercing damage. The piece of ammunition is then destroyed. You cast a spell, you can designate any creatures you choose, and the spell ignores them. Okay, so you lay down like a landmine, but it only shoots off one attack for 1d6 piercing damage. Doesn't seem terribly impressive. I guess it's only a second level spell. It does last for eight freaking hours. You could add more spell. That's, huh, it's interesting. Plant that somewhere where you think there's a patrol or something, and it just flies up and attacks. Are you playing dude Bayonetta? You know, I didn't think about Bayonetta as, a, as an inspiration. Um, but that might not be far out. I never did play the Bayonetta games. I'm not usually into the uh, those big action games. I've heard good things, though. Um, I do not have the big, like, hair or the high heels or any of that stuff going on, though. <laughs> that would be pretty fabulous. Um, yeah, I guess, like, I mean, it doesn't take concentration, which is nice. It's either that or blinding demons would probably be pretty good. I don't think most demons are probably immune to blind. Maybe I discover that's better to blind them than to fear them. Although, both Cleric and Bard have access to that spell as well. Animal Messenger. Animal messenger. He's an animal to deliver a message. I've got my imp. I've got my imp familiar. I don't. What's you know? I'm a I'm a demon hunter ranger, but I don't give a shit about animals. <laughs> Not at all. Or I could just take scorching ray and just have it. Or no, I don't have it. Sorry, that's my. Uh, I've got that through the uh, warlock ability. I can't take that with this level. Um, what is spike growth? Concentration. You turn the ground and it spikes. Mm, probably between silence and a cordon of arrows or blindness, then. Yeah. Oh, that's true, because they have to target. Yeah, I mean, none of this works well for the ranger. You'd think the ranger would have more freaking bonus action spells like the paladin does, but they do not. Their spells are garbage. Compared to, compared to the paladin, their spells just seem really garbagey. You know what? I think Blindness Deafness is also through my Warlock uh, feature and not through... I don't think I can take that this level either. Legally. I think I'm only being able to choose a uh, Ranger spell this level. So... And I think uh, Scorching Ray and Blindness Deafness are both part of that. So I'm going to choose uh, Silence. Yes, it's Concentration, but if there are enemy spellcasters in an area, like that's a good damn thing to pick. If it turns out that 
uh, Gillian's already got it, then or Tim, then I will replace uh, Silence with something else. I, I need to basically I need to coordinate this spell slot with whatever they don't have restoration or something. Yeah, a lot of fiends have uh, wings, don't they? All right, we're level ten. Um, we need to go one more ranger because that gives us our important ability score improvement, which we're actually going to use as an ASI to really get stronger here. So, hey, we finally rolled above average. It was only one above average, but I'm going to friggin' take it. God. I guess if we weren't taking the average, though, I'd actually be below average right now on hit points. All right. Basically, land stride is dumb. Well, I'll have to plug in all the revised ranger stuff. All right, now the ability score improvement comes in handy. What would you recommend for single damage abilities? Because my damage is basically going to be through my attacks. Um, spells I think should include Xanathars, I think. I think we've been seeing all the Xanathar content in here. So we can increase two abilities by one or one by two. So if we go Dex and Wiz, I think that is our best choice. There, give us that sweet, sweet 20 Dex. And obviously, like, my Dex is better than my charisma, so I should be trying to attack with my crossbows versus attacking with spells. Uh, no new spells for the ranger. Apply changes. Rangers don't get ritual casting. Oh, interesting. Even though some spells are tagged as ritual. So now becomes the interesting choice where I'm right now level 11, but Our class is 17, initiative is 5, and the uh, revised ranger has advantage on initiative, so my initiative is going to be great. Armor class is good. I've got a, holy shit, plus 11 to hit. 4, plus 5 is 9, plus 2 from archery is, yeah, I've got a plus 11 to hit with this freaking crossbow. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, I mean, it's a 1d6, although plus 5 is great, but I've got extra attack, and if I have my bonus action, I can use my bonus action to attack with it as well. And then, obviously, all these other damage plugs are awesome. But if I take just a little bit more Warlock, um, my second level Warlock spell slots become... Which I think is plugged in. To, this is the really confusing thing, is there's no way to separate this in Roll20. So right now, it shows five level two slots, but what, what this actually means is I have three... Uh, spell casting slots from the ranger and two packed magic spell slots from the warlock so i'll just have to keep track of the fact that two of these will get back on a short rest it gets a little bit trickier also i have no idea why it doubled up on some of these i have to clean this character sheet up this might be a uh, an effect of multi-classing i don't know but a couple of these spells are put in there twice but yes i think i would like to go warlock two more levels because you gain the extra invocation and those second level spell slots that you get on a short rest become third level, and I gain access to uh, two new spells by taking two more Warlock abilities. So I think, at the very least, I'm going to go Warlock 5. So I think these last two levels, we're going Warlock. Which means we're going to have to be a Warlock, a, a Ranger 8, Warlock 5. Point roll. Ooh, that's pretty good for a warlock. Seven. Definitely take that. We're right now at 100 hit points. Which, frankly, is not... I mean... I guess it's good for a, a backline. Certainly no manix. Uh, we get... Wait. We get another ASI here? Oh, I didn't even count this one. That's right. I, I have three by the time I get to 12. Oh, balls. I get... I could pick a feat here. 
Holy crap, that's weird. I did it like back to back, but that's because the way the levels lined up. Well, now I can choose Elemental Adept. And make sure that fire damage gets in. Which would help Hellish Rebuke and my uh, Fireball that I plan on taking. The other one is... Um, there is a Tiefling-specific feat you can take. Um, where is that one? What is that feat called? Somebody help me. Oh, you're going to take Sharpshooter? Uh, what is Sharpshooter? Attacking at long range doesn't impose a disadvantage on your ranged weapon attack rolls. Boy, that would that would actually solve my hand crossbow issue, wouldn't it? Because hand crossbows have a bad range of 30. Your ranged attacks ignore half cover and three quarters cover. That doesn't come up too often when we play our games, but that's still really good. Before you make an attack with a pr weapon you are proficient with, you can choose to take a minus five penalty attack roll. If the attack gets you, add plus 10 to the attack's damage. Wow. Wow. That is... Yeah, that's really good. That's hard to pass up. That means I don't have to stay within 30 feet. I ignore cover. Flames of... F yeah, I want to look at that one. So Sharpshooter is really good. It's not useless. The penalty... Um, it's probably worth taking on everything that's not a high AC also. God, doing plus 10. That's disgustingly crazy. I can't believe this is even a thing. Minus 5 to do plus 10 damage is insanity. Because I've got a plus 11 to hit right now. So on most creatures who have like a reasonable AC, I could take that minus 5 just fine and deal an insane amount of damage. Yeah... Yeah. <laughs> I got excited about Elemental Adept, but you're right. Sharpshooter, I uh, pretty much need to need to do. God, now I really don't need Eldritch Blast then if I can, don't have to worry about long range disadvantage. I wonder how I should do that in roll 20, if I should have a separate attack that's minus 5, but plus 10 damage. Because I don't think there's a way to do a penalty attack modifier. I wonder if, what the best way to do that in roll 20 is. It's funny that I, I take a level of Warlock to then gain the Sharpshooter V. That's how insane this character is. Um, I get a new Cantrip and one new Warlock spell. I have to choose level 2, but I think next turn I get a level 3 spell. And then I could just replace the level 2 one with level 3. So that's not a big deal. Um, cantrip, I don't know. It's probably not going to come up. Minor illusion, I guess, just to take it. Do I need prestidigitation if I already got thaumaturgy? Ooh, I can instantly clean an object. That's perfect. I can clean my clothes and guns that way. Perfection. Um, I don't think it matters what level 2 spell I'm taking, because I will immediately probably replace that with two level 3s, because I assume uh, those will be better to have. Take a uh, hold person. Although hold person could be good. We yeah, have selected sharpshooter. Ridiculous. Interesting. You need Sharpshooter to keep up with the Spellcaster. I'm, you know, what's interesting is we don't have um, a really powerful pure... I guess Bard is a pure Spellcaster, so Gillian would probably be the closest thing we have to um, that role. But we don't have a, like, a wizard or a sorcerer. So I'm, like, the next in line to be a big Spellcaster, and I'm only going to have five levels of Warlock, so... But, importantly, that will give me access to third level spells so no ranger one warlock can I 
Get another good dent. Nope. <laughs> no, I cannot. Take the average. I'm just going to put me at 107 at level 13. It's not too shabby. Not as high as some of the people were in Tomb, which they only got to level 11. So I'm definitely lower than a melee person. Which is good, because I'm not melee. Alright, we get another invocation. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Clerics. Clerics are just amazing in general. Like, full spellcasters and full plate mail, and they're decent melee. Like, Cleric is just an amazing class. Always has been. Um, What do I take for this invocation? I do not know. I do have access to... Um, five. When you are in an area of dim light or darkness, you can you can just become invisible at will. If you're in dim light or darkness, that would be a good way to uh, start off combat. I can cast darkness. I can see in darkness. I'm Batman. Tomb of Livestus. As a reaction when you take damage, you can entomb yourself in ice. <laughs> this is the fucking ice tomb spell from uh, Heroes of the Storm. Uh, like, Jaina has this. You gain 10 temporary hit points per warlock level. Jesus. Which take as much of the triggering damage as possible. Immediately after you take the damage, you gain a vulnerability to fire damage. Your speed is reduced to zero, and you're incapacitated. All end when the ice melts, which is the end of your next turn. So it's an, it's an emergency panic button. But you can use it once per short rest, and it doesn't take a uh, spell slot. That is a good one to have. But I think we've mentioned I've got a lot of emergency abilities now. I've got Misty Step. I think I still have Arms of Hadar. Um, Zephyr Strike. Like I've got a couple of different ways to uh, get out of jail free. I really like the... Uh, I already have Gift of the Ever-Living One. So the, ones I, the, the two that I have right now are... Uh, Devil's Sight and Gift of the Ever-Living Ones, which means I get increased uh, healing as long as my familiar is nearby. So I'm picking my third one now. Which, the only other one would be decent would maybe be Detect Magic at Will. Um, Will always needs to be his magic detected. But... And that one is pretty good. Certainly if he's a demon hunter, he would do it. I don't know, it's probably between that one and the invisibility and darkness. Now, it does mention as soon as he takes an action or move, uh, he's no longer invisible. So it's only useful, really, if he's an area, if he can stealth up to an area of darkness and then go invisible and then, like, combat starts and then nobody sees him until his turn, I guess, that kind of thing. Um, or just make him really stealthy when it comes to being in the darkness. What is Minions of Chaos? I don't have that one. I do not have Hex as a spell. Um, I don't think Mage Armor is good enough, though, right? I mean, I've already, yeah, I've already got Armor. Um, which one is which site? Is that Eldritch site? Read every language, yeah. What would be best for a demon hunter, though? I don't think I need to take any of the uh, Eldritch Blast ones, either. And a lot of the spell ones aren't that good. It's like, use this as a Warlock spell slot. Well, okay. Uh, let's say... Let's say, uh... We're gonna roll a 1d2. Voice of Chain... So, Voice of Chain Master... It, doesn't that just let you talk out of your imp? Because it says you can communicate telepathically and perceive through your familiar senses, but as part of the Find Familiar spell, you can already do the familiar thing, where you can shut your senses off and perceive through your familiar and communicate telepathically. So I don't even understand why that's a part of this invocation. The only thing you can't normally do with your familiar through the find familiar spell is to speak through the familiar in your own voice. 
So I don't know if it's worth taking a vacation for that. I also love Mask of Many Faces, but I did that with my last character, and I don't want to overlap too much. All right, so I'm going to roll a 1d2. Uh, one is going to be um, Eldritch Sight for Detect Magic at Will, and two will be um, one with Shadows for Invisibility in Darkness. All right, one with Shadows it is. We can go Invisible in Dim Light or Darkness. Ever the better hunter. I think he's going to have pretty good stealth, too, because I think I picked stealth as a proficiency. All right, now we've got level 3 Warlock spells. Um, uh, which, there's a lot of good spells in here. There's a lot of good spells. Um, we can replace a spell so I can get two level 3s, which is probably going to be the way to go. I mean... There's a lot of good spell choices here. Hypnotic Pattern. Is that only humanoid, though? No, each creature. Um, although, a lot of demons might be immune to charm. And you know what? Gillian has that spell, too. So we're not going to take that one. Thank you. Um, I think we gotta take Fireball, just to have it. Like, granted, a lot of enemies are gonna be immune to it, but oh well. And then we could replace something else... ...for Hunting Demons. Counterspell, probably great. I really hope Gillian has Counterspell. Although, if I go high enough in Ranger, I'll have an automatic at-will Counterspell. Yeah, lots of enemies will have will have fire resistance. That's gonna be a bummer. I mean, it's a weird concept too to have all these fire things, and then you're fighting enemies that are usually good against fire. But uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully there'll be enough enemies that aren't immune to fire, basically, where I can use a fireball. And normally, I'll be using my crossbows anyway, so this is not even gonna be a, a big part of the build. Uh, what is life sense? The duration you sense the location of any creature that isn't a construct or undead within 30 feet of you. Within 30 feet? That's not very... That's not very far. <laughs> it's basically divine sense. 30 feet is terrible, though. They're basically on top of you at that point. That's true. Counter spells coming back on short rests would be nice to have. Um... Magic Circle is kind of interesting. Is that... Yeah, that is Warlock. 10-foot radius, 20-foot cylinder of magical... Right, it's, it's a non-combat spell, though. Can't willingly enter the cylinder, my non-magical me. I mean, you could use that as a protection against rest, but I'm sure, like, Gilling could just make her hut, so it's kind of pointless at that point. You could also trap a demon in there, I guess. And elect to cause this magic to operate in reverse direction, preventing a creature of the specified type from leaving the cylinder and protecting runes. <sighs> Thematically, it seems like a, a, a spell that he would have, which is literally you could use that to trap a demon. Um, or protect yourselves against demons. They can't willingly enter the circle by non magically. There's not even a save, they just can't. Oh, interesting. Well, you know, we've never played it like that, but I think that is in our house rules, that you have to actually spend the consumable reagent. Fly, yeah, fly would be cool. A lot of demons fly, so as a hunter, he would take the flight. It is concentration, unfortunately. Um, and, I mean, I'm ranged anyway. Like, I can just shoot people. So I don't know how often I'd actually have to fly to shoot people. And a lot of demons have wings, they would probably just fly up and attack me. <laughs> um, probably Counterspell would be the best way to hunt down people. Hunger of Hadar is really cool. Avoid in the space time. But again, I'm looking at mainly non combat stuff. Fear, but again, enemies are into fear. 
Hypnotic Pattern, I'm pretty sure Gillian can handle. Stinking Cloud is... That one is an AoE that like doesn't do damage, just makes them lose their turn. Con saving throw against Poison. Although I wonder if they're immune to Poison, if that means... That doesn't affect them. Misty Step for Thunder Step. Yeah, and the weird thing is the way the Warlock spell slots work is everything is going to be level 3. There is no... So, like, upcasting spells is certainly a thing for Warlock. Teleport yourself to an occupied space. You can see within range. Immediately after you disappear, a thunderous boom sounds. Each creature within 10 feet of the space. You left must make a con saving throw. Take 3d10 thunder damage. So you disappear in a clap of thunder. Although it can be heard up to 300 feet away. And this character is kind of more stealthy. Yeah, Misty Step is unfortunately the only one I'm feeling a little bit miffed about because it just doesn't scale for the third level spell slot. But, I mean, assuming the DM lets me, um, and it sounds like we're going to be using the rule where you can interchangeably use them between Warlock spells and uh, Ranger spell slots, I could just use a Ranger spell slot to Misty Step as well. I don't want to bring up that argument again, though. <laughs> um, probably... Death most seems to be a poison, yeah. I did pick fire. Well, I mean, the only difference is I can replace... Um, I can replace one of my earlier spells with a level 3 spell, just in case things don't, like, scale as well. Like, Arms of Hadar. Although, at 3rd level, Arms of Hadar does uh, 46 necrotic damage. But... You know, do I want to use Arms of Hadar? It's, I don't know if that one's necessarily thematically appropriate. He doesn't really use the Eldritch stuff very much. So maybe we could replace that one with uh, Counterspell. Probably be pretty good. Plus, Counterspell's a reaction. So maybe we take out Arms of Hadar. Sorry, Arms. <laughs> we never got to use you because I never leveled you up in this character. You're only at 13. I do like Counterspell being on a short rest. That's pretty. That's pretty solid. Shut down those enemy spellcasters, for sure. And I like the fact that I don't have to hopefully juggle what I'm doing on my turn. It's going to be a lot of just attacking, and then, you know, extra utility kind of spells to back that up. Fireball is really my only damaging spell, so it's my big nuclear weapon. And it's only if, you know, obviously there's enough enemies, and they're not immune or resistant to fire, that I can cast that. Otherwise, everything is all like, you know, it's detect thoughts, it's darkness, pass without trace, silence... Um, Hunter's Mark, Absorb Elements, I guess Hellish Rebuke, technically my other damage one, but even that's a reaction. Oh, interesting. So only if the class actually has access to the spell. Yeah. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how much, how much it'll come up here. Because unfortunately, keeping track is going to be a pain in the butt. All right, and I think that puts together a level... Uh, hold person does, it lets you target more uh, enemies, I believe. Yep, this is what the character is going to be. Hold person, when you cast a spell using a spell soft third or higher, you can target an additional humanoid. So basically at third level, I could target two people and paralyze them. Which, you know, humanoid does include a lot of enemies. I don't know how often humanoids appear in Tier 3 and Tier 4, though, so we'll see about that. But thematically, again, you know, you're taking these spells as you level up, so presumably he would have been facing a lot of humanoids uh, in his career. So now the only confusing part I'll have to remember is the fact that these are my... Uh, these slots are my Ranger slots. And actually, if I don't go any higher into Ranger, that might be easier to keep track of, because only my first and second level slots are Ranger, and then these two... Uh, third level slots are Warlock, but I've got some Warlock spells in here, so you can see where things start getting a little tricky to keep track of. And I'll have to clean this sheet up. Maybe have to do a uh, name change also, as my wife pointed out. But I think that's what we're... Oh, it does do a minus five. Okay, okay. Minus five is an attack roll modifier. And then look at all these global damage modifiers. And then there's Sharpshooter. Okay, so in theory, if you put these on. Oh right, but it looks shitty because it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a so it's a plus minus five. Fantastic. 
That's hilarious, though. I rolled a fucking 28 with sharpshooter, which means it's a 23. That should hit everything. And then when I attack, I deal 21 damage with one crossbow bolt attack. And that's not including favored enemy, slayer's prey, or hunter's mark. Disgusting. Yeah, I would have to... I, well, I'll talk about it and see how that's going to work. but And I'll have to put in the... Uh, the extra information about what the revised ranger does. I will need a cool token. Yep. I may try and commission some art. If anybody knows some original character artists, um, you know, I've got definitely ideas of what I want this character to look like, but that would be kind of fun because otherwise we've just been Google imaging, searching art. And I always like it when uh, a lot of stream shows have original artwork to uh, show off and promote. That's always pretty cool. Skill wise, I'm not very good. Um, athletics plus five, insight, perception, stealth, and survival are my best ones. Saving throws, strength, and dex is really good, so I'll be good against the AoE attacks. Uh, mental will definitely be a weakness, though, and con is also a bit of a weakness. Plus two, unfortunately, concentration, if I get targeted, I've only got that plus two, so that's not great. Get that Slayer's Prey on there to get that extra 1d6. All right, well, this is taking two and a half hours, but... <laughs> we made a level 13 character together. I'm very happy with this character concept. It's kind of a disaster, but also has some very cool things going for it. Um, I can't thank you all enough for uh, joining me with me for this long, uh, for an extremely supersized session to get this character built, but I am very stoked about um, how they work and what they look like. Um, and uh, I, I'm really excited for this campaign. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, I don't know if I'll be streaming any more D&D related content until we start our session. I'll try and let everybody give a heads up on that. Obviously, join the Discord if you're not already on there for discussions. But otherwise, and aside from my Let's Play streams, uh, I'll see you all for our uh, session zero for War for the Lost Plane on August 14th. Everybody have a awesome weekend. Stay awesome. Stay safe. See you next time.